The RIT Sports Network proudly welcomes you to the Gene Policini Center on the campus of the Rochester Institute of Technology, where tonight it's game two of the Atlantic Hockey Semifinals between RIT and Niagara. Last night, RIT goaltender Tommy Scarfoni stole the show with 38 saves, including 18 in the third period, as he helped lead the Tigers to their fifth straight overall victory and move them a step closer to a spot in next weekend's AHA Championship game. And good news for the Tigers as they appear to be shaking the illness that has moved through the locker room this week. Number nine, Tyler Fukukusa back in the lineup tonight after missing Game one. Good evening and welcome to RIT Hockey pregame live here on the RIT Sports Network. Well, the Tigers and Purple Eagles renewed their rivalry last night, meeting in the postseason for the first time since the 2019 Atlantic Hockey Semifinals. Tigers entered the night two for five all time against Niagara in the postseason. Game one last night of the semifinals, just over five minutes to go. We got the highlights in the first. Tigers gaining the zone here. Watch Elijah Gonzalez. The nice feed coming up to Crossley Stewart and Stewart skating in on net. of the year. Tigers take game one, 4-1 afterwards. Our Kim Coffey caught up with the guy that helped save the Tigers in the third. How did the Purple Eagles really push you to your limits tonight in game one of uh, best of three? Just a lot of shots, but I kind of liked it. I like uh, receiving a lot of shots. Keeps me in the game compared to last weekend. Uh, no, it was, it was fun for me, but we played well. Uh, Good lockdown defense, and uh, we'll win tomorrow, finish them off. You guys able to kill off a two-man advantage. How are you able to keep your focus there amongst all that chaos? I know it got a little nuts there at times. Yeah, well, we know what they try to do on their power plays. Uh, not going to say it because they're going to watch this, but uh, we know exactly what they're doing, and uh, we're used to being on the penalty kill, so we practice it all the time, So, and for me, I love it. So. Yeah, you don't want to give anything away, for sure. Uh, but how important was it to come out here and win game one? Game one, probably the most important game to, to get have uh, early. Yeah, it's, it's huge. I mean, uh, you obviously want to get the first game and then be able to send him home on the second day, uh, not be on your heels on, for game two. But uh, no, it's huge. But now we just got to turn the page and look for tomorrow. Forward to tonight, Niagara outshot the Tigers 39 to 24, but Scarfoni was big last night with those 38 saves. It's his 35th career game with at least 30 saves. With 17 goals, Matthew Wild has now surpassed former Tiger Mike Tarantino for the most goals ever by an RIT freshman. Jojo Casero scored for a fourth consecutive game, and his 17 goals lead all defensemen nationally. How about that Tiger PK? Stellar. Niagara 0 for 5 on the night, and also important to highlight here, RIT blocked a season-high 21 shot shots last night, including four apiece by Carter Wilkie and Dimitri Micro-Giannakis. So RIT is now just one win away from reaching the conference finals for the first time since 2016. But as you know, 
Niagara has plenty of fight left in them, and it won't be easy for RIT with more on tonight's game to Tiger head coach Wayne Wilson with our John DeTulio. Johnny. All right, Kevin, thanks so much. Wayne, before we look ahead to game two, let's look back at last night. We were just, you know, discussing a gritty win for your team. Would you agree? Yeah, I thought, uh, you know, it was a, a physical game. I, yeah. um, we had to get through some adversity. I, I thought we did a real good job with our penalty kill. Uh, Tommy was outstanding in goal when we needed him, and uh, just a gutsy effort, and we got timely goals when we needed them. And then the block shots, a season high. What's it say about your team? Are you finding different ways to win last night? Yeah, we've been strong in that area for most yeah. of the year. Uh, some games you get tested a little bit more. That was last night a little bit. Uh, I think just the volume of uh, that we were shorthanded, uh, and giving up also a five on three. So those are th you know things we want to stay away from tonight. Is is uh, playing a man down tonight. We want to generate some offense and also generate some uh, power play. Uh, situations for ourselves. Well, last night you only had one opportunity. They had five. Talk about your special teams. Really, that, could have, that was the difference shutting them out 0 for 5 last night. Yeah, I thought uh, particularly the five on three when mm -hmm. the game was still uh, in jeopardy there. So I thought uh, we did a good job all, all uh, uh, night long in our penalty kill. And, the, and, the, and we have been all year long. We're one of the tops in the country for a reason. Maybe we get too much practice at it. But uh, yeah, but it's an area that we want to uh, and not have to rely on tonight. We want to kind of rely more on our power player. We're successful on that here tonight and uh, take it to them in, in that regard. Let's get, uh, let's talk about Tommy. I mean, this is what we've come to expect, right? Did he do, I mean, what he did last night is what he's been doing all year. Yeah, I thought uh, the best part of his game was not only stopping the buck puck, but really controlling any rebounds, not a lot of second or third efforts, uh, uh, opportunities for them. So. His rebound control was exceptional, and he, he killed a lot of plays around the crease when they had numbers around the net, and uh, good for him. In a fast start, just like last night, even m maybe more so tonight, to get off to that fast start and get that early lead? I think everyone wants to do that, and yeah. we'll, we'll try that as much as possible as well. We want to get pucks behind their D, get on top of their D, get our four check and our offensive set going tonight. So that's one area of, of the game that we want to uh, be good at and uh, getting off to the good start, uh, get you in that mode and uh, just kind of carry it through 60 minutes. And trying to knock out a team elimination game, not easy to do. Talk about tonight the mindset and the message uh, to your team. Well, there's a lot of hockey left, you know, uh, yeah. whether it's 60 minutes, whether it's 120 minutes, you yeah. never know. So uh, we've got to just keep playing hockey and, and playing to our identity for the full 60 minutes and uh, from the from the start uh, to the finish, we've got to be dialed in, uh, focused, and and play with a lot of energy. This is why I don't coach. I I'm all over the place. You're, right? You're cool hand Luke over here right Thank now. Thank you. <laughs> Best of luck tonight. Thanks a lot. That's head coach uh, Wayne Wilson here, cool and collected as the Tigers gearing up for game two with Niagara. Kevin, back to you. I'm glad he is, because you're right. We are a mess otherwise <laughs> up here and in the booth tonight. Meanwhile, the other semifinal has Holy Cross hosting AIC. The Crusaders are back in the semis for a second straight season, while the Yellow Jackets are making their third appearance in the last four years. Game one last night at the Hart Center in Worcester, Massachusetts. First period under a minute to go. Tied at one, and the Yellow Jackets, oh, they unravel. Jack Stockfish to Tyler Girardozzi. Crusaders took their first lead of the night, 2-1 after a cross-checking penalty on AIC. Holy Cross capitalizes. Final seconds of the period as Liam McClinsky scores and Holy Cross gets two goals in a span of 32 seconds. They led 3-1 after one. Second period, AIC less than two minutes in, though. They respond. Casey McDowell. McDonald scores. Yellow Jackets back within one. Under two minutes to play in the game. AIC with the extra attacker, but they can't keep it in the zone. And guess who? Liam McClinsky stealing it with the first of two empty netters. Crusaders took game one by a final of 5-2. to two. McClinsky's two goals give him 12 in his AHA postseason career which ties him for second on the league's all-time list he's two away from breaking that record game two tonight as Holy Cross will look to return to the AHA championship for the second straight year Crusaders have two titles all-time with the last coming in 2006 face off in Worcester coming up just like us, 7.05. Well, still to come on pregame live, RIT associate head coach David Salako will join us once again tonight to share what the Tigers need to do to close out this series. Plus, number 10 for RIT, defenseman 
John Franco Casero. His empty netter last night ties him for the team lead with 17 goals on the season. The Tigers Blue Liner will join our Kim Coffey live next as our coverage continues. From the Gene Policini Center, it's game two of the Atlantic Hockey Semifinals between RIT and Niagara at 7.05. This is pregame live on the RIT Sports Network. showcase their innovative ideas, projects, performances, and prototypes that push the boundaries of creativity. Our students are shaping the future from groundbreaking technologies to dynamic art displays. While on campus, inspire your imagination at The Shed, RIT's newest hub for exploration and collaboration. On Saturday, April 27th, join us at Imagine RIT Creativity and Innovation Festival, where ideas come to life. the goal right there to get that trophy back here on pregame live with a win tonight RIT would secure a spot in next Saturday's AHA championship and the Tigers would have a shot at their first title in eight years and fourth overall hey in the net for Niagara tonight will once again be number 31 Jared Fist the grad transfer from AIC 16 10 and 2 record this season for the Purple Eagles and after giving up three goals last night his goals against average has now dipped to 2.68 on the year for RIT Tommy Scarfoni returns to the net for an encore tonight last night the junior netminder became only the second division one era Tiger to surpass the 2400 save mark he's currently 51 stops shy of breaking Logan Drackett's program record he'll certainly get it at some point well speaking of records with 17 goals now on the season RIT defenseman Jojo Casero has broken the Atlantic hockey single season record for goals by a defenseman and of course he leads the nation in goals scored by a blue liner Jojo has been tremendous and he's made a tremendous impact on this program since transferring in three years ago he's live now with our Kim Coffee. Kim Jojo you guys win the first one here four to one it really feels like this team is more focused than ever you guys dealing with a little adversity some sickness injuries how have you along with the other leaders on this team really kept this team focused throughout the uh, playoffs here yeah I just think uh as a group, not just the leaders, but as a group, uh, we remind each other of the goals that we all set at the beginning of the year, and uh, that's what's keeping us on track right now is checking off those boxes, getting those goals. You guys killed off all five Niagara power plays yesterday. You know this team. They're going to do what they can to rattle you guys. What's it going to take to stay out of the box and, and stay out of trouble tonight? Yeah, I just think uh, play between the whistles and uh, have some composure. I think... Uh, you know, they play best when they're getting under our skins, but I think we just uh, have to stay composed and uh, and stay away from all that. Niagara season on the line. What do you guys have to do to come out, set the pace up front, score a goal early? Yeah, I think uh, it starts with the first shift of the game, get it in, uh, go on the forecheck and uh, make some big hits and kind of uh, just get ourselves into it before they do. But that's, uh, that's the game plan tonight. 
All right, Jojo, good luck tonight, and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Kevin? All right, Kim, thank you so much. Meanwhile, the RIT women's lacrosse team entered the day, winners of four straight, following a successful spring break trip to San Juan, Puerto Rico last weekend. Today, the Tigers opening Liberty League conference play against Ithaca at Doug Mayfield, second quarter. Tigers pull closer to thanks to Carissa Hillawa, who scores right there. Tigers back within two. Ithaca, though, would settle down, go on a little bit of a run to end the half as Maisie Vetch Scores here unassisted, part of four unanswered by the Bombers. They led 11-5 at the break. Third quarter, though, Tigers chipping away. Serafina Kizilgoff, big season so far for her. Big day for her as well. Team leading four goals on the afternoon. Tigers back within four again, but that is as close as they would get. RIT, defensive breakdown right here. Elizabeth Green scoring easily unassisted. Tigers' four-game win streak is over as they drop their Liberty League opener today by a final of 20 to 12. Meanwhile, in Division Three men's lacrosse, just the seventh meeting all time between number three RIT, number two Tufts, but the first ever regular season meeting happening right now as the two are facing off in the Mustang Classic down in Maryland. And so far, so good for the Tigers. Unbeaten RIT leads unbeaten Tufts 10 to 5. We're so used to that being a final four matchup. It's kind of strange to see it so early in the season. The RIT baseball team completed its spring break trip to Central Florida this morning. Tigers went 2 and 6 in the Sunshine State after losing to Muhlenberg 10 3. Tigers return to action Wednesday versus Crosstown rival St. John Fisher, a game that can be seen on the RIT Sports Network. First pitch from the ballpark at Tiger Stadium set for three o'clock. Well, still to come on pregame live, John and Gene will join us to share their keys to tonight's game number two. Plus, if you're just joining us, we'll show you how this guy right there helped deliver a game one victory for RIT last night. It's all straight ahead on your home for Tiger hockey. You're watching pregame live on the RIT Sports Network. Imagine RIT, where students showcase their innovative ideas, projects, performances, and prototypes that push the boundaries of creativity. Our students are shaping the future, from groundbreaking technologies to dynamic art displays. While on campus, inspire your imagination at The Shed, RIT's newest hub for exploration and collaboration. On Saturday, April 27th, join us at Imagine RIT, Creativity and Innovation Festival, where ideas come to life. We celebrate the athletes, the buzzer beaters, the record breakers, the wins. Now, it's time to celebrate the people behind it all. The advice givers, the community shapers, the game changers, the life changers. It's time to celebrate our coaches. Join all of us at BSN Sports and show your coach some love by sharing their story with hashtag thank you coach. Explore your passions and challenge the status quo. At Rochester Institute of Technology, we push boundaries, champion creativity and innovation, and move the world forward. RIT's community of problem solvers blend technology, the arts, and design, pursuing theories, breaking barriers, and challenging themselves to achieve more than expected. At RIT, we're always on to something exceptional. I'm driving at RIT because of the great support system. Because of the professional opportunities here on campus. The co-op program, which gave me real world experience. By providing me with the tools to make my dreams a reality. Let's take a look at last night's uh, Hockey Central. We'll show you that what happened here last night, right now. Uh, let's take that if we have that. Show you the highlights from last night. Apparently, we don't have those.
Tigers lived it out of the zone. Dude, the back check has been tremendous here in the opening period. Just really moving their skates tonight on the Tigers. Elijah Gonsalves with the takeaway, sending it ahead, tapping it back. Stewart, the backhand in front. Oh, yes! Scores! Tyler Mahan! What a finger IT! Here come the Tigers. Evan Miller gains the zone. Miller going in, backhand to the far side. Anson Ducata, fired, scores! Yes! Aiden Hanson, Ducata, 2 nothing RIT! In the five on three, Luke Milmock back up top. Ziski fires, off the iron! Oh boy! Hit the post! Ziski gets it back to the far side. 10 seconds of five on three, and Scarpa, he makes the save. Still not out. For Horncross, drops it back. Two, one. Nicholson out of the box. It's a five on four. Right, here we go. As in front, Scarfoni the save, the rebound. And then right on top is going to be Connor Milmock as Tommy Scarfoni holds on. Tigers get a steal as going ahead. Catalano, Catalano to Wild. Yes! Yes! Matthew Wild, three of the Garanti. As per Horncross, trying to tap it down, Scarponi and it rolls oh in. Oh boy. So Niagara is alive with the extra attacker on the ice. Purple Eagle strike with 346 okay. remaining. Okay. Jeffrey off the glass, not out. 14 seconds remaining, and yes, down the ice will do go. Get in there. Yes, sir. We'll see you tomorrow night. <laughs>all right, Dave, game two here, but we always know it's tough when any team is facing elimination. So what kind of pressure do you think you're going to be facing right here from the get-go? No, oh, we're going to get their best, and uh, we're ready for it. Um, we know we need to be better tonight than we were last night, and we got to come out and compete really hard and execute under pressure. And talk about that pressure last night, Dave. You guys get outshot, but then again, the power play or, or your penalty kill in 21 block shots. Talk about the grit your team showed last night. I, I thought we showed a lot of grit. Um, you know, I, I didn't like the fact that we took five penalties in the game and we were shorthanded five on three for almost uh, a minute and a half. Uh, we weathered that storm and we survived that and we got some timely saves and some timely goals and we found a way to grind it out and get it done. But uh, tonight we need to be better. We need to stay out of the box and um, we need to play more a five on five game. Yeah, and, and last one here, Dave, Tommy Scarfoni. What, what more can we say here? He is playing the best uh, he had, we've seen him this year, would you not say? He's playing great right now. We need that uh, to continue, obviously. So, um, you know, looking forward to tonight's contest and uh, looking to elevate our game. Dave, thanks for your time. Go get him. Thank you. Game two coming up here, oh. John. Is, uh, everybody's got their game face on here. They tonight. do. you got to stay out of the box. But Niagara, they, you just can't take the bait. And that's the style they play. They want you to, to commit mistakes, commit penalties. I think that's a key tonight for the Tigers, no question. As we take a look at our players to watch here tonight, J.A. Ahern from Niagara had their only goal last night. That game with under four minutes to go. He's playing the right wing along with Wallace and Ranklev, and he's a, somebody who can make a play. Yeah, just the, part of their uh, equation is the balance, and it starts with Ahern, who had 10 goals on the season, was going along with 15 assists, had a goal last night. The Purple Eagles, they did get 39 shots, hit, the, hit a couple of posts, but I think they even want to get more traffic in on Tommy tonight. But I thought the key last night, Tommy didn't give up many rebounds at all to the Purple Eagles. Now, the Tigers had only one power play last night. But when they are on the power play, watch for that big frame in front. Matthew Wild last night converting on the two-on-one. We think he should have been first-team all-rookie. I mean, he's had an incredible year. 
eight goals in his last eight games. That, the newbie line, we haven't really come up with a name for that, for that freshman line, but he's an incredible player. Kind of quiet last night till he got the goal. Now they got Fukakusa back in the lineup. They are, that line is back together. Number six right now is on a run. It's incredible, as I just mentioned, eight game, or eight goals in eight games. He's been unstoppable the last month or so. Yeah, as uh, we take a look at the keys here, John, what has to happen here tonight? Well, you gotta show your teeth, right? Elimination game, come on. Show your teeth, Tigers. I think that's what it comes down. Fast start, right? You're look, you gotta apply that knockout punch. And if you're the Purple Eagles, you gotta light the fuse. You're one for 16 on the power play this year versus the Tigers. You gotta find a way to solve their PK, and you're right, keep them grounded. Like, just like last night, just what Dave and Salako said, grit, 21 block shots. The special teams were great last night, especially the penalty kill. That's, you add that all up, that's the elements, or that's the ingredients for a broom. Put the brooms down. Get them ready to go right now for the Tigers. I'm feeling broomage. I just said it. Yeah, I'm feeling it, and I want it. We, we all want it. Uh, Is that broomage. a word? <laughs> I just invented broomage. I think you did. I just invented broomage, zambonage, whatever you want to call it. I'm dialing up a victory tonight. Hopefully we can break out broomage yeah. <laughs> later tonight. Thank you all so right, much. Appreciate it, guys. Well, we're closing in on the 56th all-time meeting between these two rivals. We'll wrap things up from here next. You're watching pregame live on the RIT Sports Network. Explore your passions and challenge the status quo. At Rochester Institute of Technology, we push boundaries, champion creativity and innovation, and move the world forward. RIT's community of problem solvers blend technology, the arts, and design, pursuing theories, breaking barriers, and challenging themselves to achieve more than expected. At RIT, we're always on to something exceptional. Game one went to the Tigers as RIT was led by four different goal scorers and 38 saves from Tommy Scarfoni. Tigers looking for the sweep in their sixth straight win here tonight. However, if Niagara can even this up, we will be back with you tomorrow night for a decisive game three. Our coverage, if necessary, would begin at 4.30 with pregame live, followed by faceoff between the Tigers and Purple Eagles at 5.05 exclusively here on Flow Hockey. If there is a game three tomorrow, we can tell you there will be tickets available. You can grab your seats by calling or visiting the Policini Center box office or online at RITtickets.com. If the Tigers win in advance tonight, tickets for next Saturday's AHA championship game would go on sale at 10 a.m. on Monday. If you're just joining us, freshman Tyler Fukukusa back in the up tonight following an illness that forced him to miss game one. The trio of uh, from Mississauga is back together tonight. Simon Isabel will center the line of Adam Jeffrey and Tanner Andrew. Well, will the Tigers break out the brooms or will the Purple Eagles survive another day? John and Gene, have the call and I'll see you back here for the intermission report. Enjoy it. Game two between RIT and Niagara is next.
CRT Sports Network proudly welcomes you to the Gene Palacini Center on the campus of the Rochester Institute of Technology, where tonight it's game two of the Atlantic Hockey Semifinal, the Tigers hosting the Purple Eagles of Niagara. Along with John DiTullio, my name is Gene Battaglia. The Tigers taking care of business in game one. Important to get the, obviously important to win game one in a short series, but even tougher to knock a team out. Next 60 minutes, a huge challenge for the Tigers. Yes, uh, if the Tigers can pull this off tonight, they are in the championship game. What has to happen, John? Well, I think you got to show your teeth if you're the Tigers, right? You, just like last night, I, I think a fast start is paramount. They've got to play smart, play fast, keep your poise. If you're the Purple Eagles, you got to find a way to solve the PK for the Tigers. They are one for 16 this season on the power play versus RI team. And let's keep them grounded. Blocking shots, penalty kill. Add that all up. That was why they won last night. You've got to duplicate it again tonight and get more pucks to the net. Game two comes your way next year on the RIT Sports Network. Always tough, John DiTullio, to eliminate any yep. team, so we fully expect Niagara to come out firing here in game two. I think it's important. Uh, we talk about a fast start. Every Both teams want to get off to a fast start. I think it's even more important for Niagara to strike first in this game. So you take a look at tonight's starting goaltenders. Jared Fisk back in goal for Niagara, the AIC transfer, and... I'm not sure if he had uh, any, you know, he was not the reason why Niagara fell last night. No, absolutely not. But again, I don't think he faced the Tigers at their best offensively last night. I think you'll get a, I think you'll get more shots peppered at him tonight than what he did last night. Now, on the other hand, Tommy Scarfoni, even though it was not a shutout in the end, that might have been his best game of the season last think night. Think about, he had 18 saves in the third period alone. The importance of those saves, I think the reason we're talking about the Tigers winning or up one to none, I know they had three goals last night before the empty netter. I thought Scarfoni was the reason that they won that game. Lineup changes tonight for the Tigers, and it's great that Tyler Fukakusa is feeling healthy enough to go back in the lineup, missing last night due to an illness. Credit Evan Miller for the way he stepped yep. in, and your extra defenseman tonight will be Gustav Blom going in place of Xavier Lapointe. Absolutely. And there's Wayne Wilson looking to get back to the conference finals for the first time in eight years. It's hard to believe it's yeah. been since 2016. So here we go. That was also, John, the last time the Tigers made the NCAA tournament. Correct. And even talking with Wayne, he goes, Niagara wants, he goes, we want to get up and down. Niagara doesn't. Because who wins the style? If RIT can dictate the pace, obviously favor the Tigers. Niagara wants to slow it down. They want to keep things at their pace, take the, you know, shorten the game, as you like to say, Gene. Wayne and I were talking about that. He goes, that's a key. That is certainly a key tonight, is the pace of this game. Just awaiting the final <laughs> seconds to tick off. They take the 705 thing very seriously here, John. I guess they don't mess around. Yeah, no. Can't be 70430, <laughs> or it's got to be 705 on the button. As uh, we are underway, game two oh. here, as Aiden Hansen Bucata, one of the goal scorers last night, will dump it in. Oh. Hobbs pushing it down low. 
And Hobbs <laughs> to the corner. As the Tigers here starting off in the Niagara. Just buckle up, everyone. This is going to be fun. No doubt. Carlin on the far side looking for a pathway out. And here comes Wallace into the zone over to Ahern. He puts it ahead. The rebound. Oh! Oh, and Tommy makes a beautiful save on Rankwell. Oh. Big save by Tommy Niagara getting the puck to the net. The rebound right there, but big save by Tommy Scarfoni. Well, I thought it was going to be one nothing from yeah. the get-go, and then somehow Tommy making that save. Such a huge save. We're 40 seconds into the game, and Niagara had a golden opportunity to grab a one nothing lead. Wild has his pocket picked as Ott will dump it in. As going down low is Scott. He gets held up and pulled down. And fans are wanting a call. They're not going to get it here, John, as not going to only blown oh. for one. Here's Fukakusa going down low. Fukakusa yes. puts it in. Woo! Just 117 in the game. The Tigers take a 1 0 lead. Count it. The big save by Tommy. And then RIT gets the rush going the other way. We talked about that line. Oh, the freshman line, the newbie line. Look at this great outlet pass. And the timing on that pass couldn't have been any better. Couldn't have been any better. Wanted a fast start. How's that for a fast start? Welcome back, Tyler Fukakusa. Fukakusa did not play last night. We're a buck 17 into the game. And the Tigers All are on the board. Right. The goal, goal his 19th of the season, scored by number nine, Tyler Fukakusa. With the assist to number 19, Christian Catalano. And number six, Matthew Wild. That's Fukakusa from Catalano and Wild. Time of the Tigers' goal, 1-17. As Tommy Scarfoni covering up. Gino, that line, that was all that, that first year line. Wild with the great pass, outlet pass, right? This great pass up ahead, and that started the rush the other way. Catalano certainly knows how to set up his teammates, oh, doesn't the he? The timing of it was perfect, but they all, everybody gets a point on that line. Just incredible start for RIT. And, uh, as yeah, Hanta Bucata in the shot. And that corner crew with a Fukakusa chant wow. going. We well, just rewind, you know. Uh, uh, basically a minute ago. If Tommy, if that, if, if they like the lamp, one nothing, momentum certainly in Niagara's favor. Just a different start. They're denied on the doorstep, and Fisk unable to come up with the save on the other end. Jeffrey and then Fisk showing the leather there. We'll have the face-off coming on again. As again, Cody Laskowski not available this week, and they're hoping next weekend, yes. maybe, is, maybe. Uh, but to have somebody like Adam Jeffrey, number 15, coming into the lineup, such a benefit having that big frame. Big frame, he's 6'5", 205. Isabel to take the draw again for the Tigers, as it will be on the near wall. Rockhoff in a battle for Niagara. And he'll come up with it, swing it to the opposite side. Niagara exiting the zone here, three on three as they'll cross in. The shot by Wallace, turned aside by Scarfoni. And the puck now coming to the near side where Isabel pushing it ahead and that'll roll down the ice. He's just logging on, here's Andrew taking oh. it away. Andrew takes it to the corner. Tigers striking in the opening minutes here, Tyler Fukakusa as Isabel taps in, and he had six points last weekend against Robert Morris. He was the Atlantic Hockey Rookie of the Week. Second time he won that award. Here's Ott along the wall. Shane Ott is going to be denied by Nicholson, and then Nicholson knocking his man Richard down. Richard going into the lineup in place of Leslie tonight for Niagara. And the Tigers here will not get it out. Mahan has it poked away. Fans wanted a call on the hit on Mahan. 
Nicholson somehow finds his way ahead. And that should be icing. Nope, it will be uh, the Tigers playing it. Nicholson to bring it ahead. Through the neutral zone, Ryan Nicholson. Ooh, as uh, Moritz on the yeah. far side was offside. Ryan Nicholson, one of these leaders on the team. Yeah. And John, not just him, but blocked shots last night. Four from Wilkie, four from Michael Giannakis. Yeah, 21 as a team, and you know, we ain't even saying this is, we've done that most of the year, but I think last night it was a, a big difference in the game, being able to block that many shots. You see some jostling before the whistle yeah. as Wilkie intercepts, he'll send it in. The Tigers quickly tag up as Hobbs along the near wall. Bouncing puck. Stewart playing it oh. ahead. Potential three on two the other direction as jumping in. Milmock cross ice feed. What a save by Scarfoni. Oh. Again, Tommy Scarfoni coming up big. Puck sitting in front. The Tigers will bring it out. Off to the races are the RIT Tigers as Gonzalez brings it ahead. Gonzalez swinging in front. Oh. Michael Giannakis puts it right on and covering up will be Fisk. But well played on the Niagara rush. Getting back defensively, Tommy then knew where to go. He knew where they were going to go with the puck and was able to just slide over and make the save. And then that starts to rush the other way for the Tigers. Tommy's come up with a couple of big saves here in the first uh, four and a half minutes. Uh, talking with Kim Coffey last night in the postgame, says he likes the shots, likes the volume. And yeah. I believe him, John. He likes to be involved like he that. He doesn't like to be idle. Like that. It's a sign of an elite player. Tigers pick the pocket. Here they come ahead as Wilkie's in front. Knocked down, that trickles through, and Fisk will hold on. Okay. Like what I'm seeing early from the Tigers. Boy, they're driving that puck. They're getting a lot of action below the dots. Just driving the puck here to the net, right? Trying to get some traffic in front. Fisk able to clean it up with the glove, but I like the attack mode here early by the Tigers. At first year line, Fukakusa, Catalano, and Weil back on the ice here. Hanson, Bucata, and Casero. Here's the quick shot that goes off the back glass. Casero dropping down low. Here's Weil pushing it ahead. Oh. And now Niagara has some numbers bringing in. Uh, ahead is Hanson, Bucata able to break that up. Here's the shot from the outside. And Tommy, oh. he shows the leather with 15 14 remaining in the first. Flashing the glove. That shot came from just inside the blue line. A little screamer here. And Tommy again, a clean window. Easy save. It's fifth already here in the nearly five minutes gone by. Wallace to take the draw against Fukakusa. Tigers now bringing it up along the near side as Wild. Out of the zone, this will go. Shovel back, but Wild gets it, sending it ahead. Catalano doesn't have the numbers, tries to work it in down low, takes a big check on the far side for Mishak. Fukukusa now holding it in the zone. He gets tangled up with Wallace, and that'll be lifted as Casero gathering it up. The Tigers will try this again. Catalano getting held up in front of the RIT bench, and now uh -oh. pushing it ahead, going on in. The shot by Rod, and the save made by Scarfoni. Quickly the other direction is Jeffrey. One-on-one -on -one with Mishak, and Mishak wins that battle. Big save the other end, but more importantly, Nicholson there for the cleanup and clear the puck. Well played. On the wall and goes off a skate. Held in on the far side as going into the lineup tonight is Murray, number 26. His first touch of the puck was not in the lineup last night. Murray has it back. Defenseman pushing it ahead. That goes all the way to Scarfoni. Oh. And yeah, with Ronda down there, he's going to cover okay. up face off here in the RIT end. Tommy, the difference last night so far, the difference here in the first nearly six minutes gone by. Well, entering the weekend, he was one of only four goaltenders in the NCAA with 20 yeah. victories. They say in football, wins are not a quarterback stat. <laughs> wins are a Stafford goalies, no doubt. He's up to 
23 now on the season. Save made by Scarfoni off the side. And sometimes, you know, fatigue, but you haven't seen any of that from him this year. No, not at all. Tanner Andrew working it ahead as Horncross knocked it away. Andrew, the good forward check. Delaying, though, just a little bit as now the Tigers at center ice trying to get that puck back. Isabel pushing it ahead. Murray as Niagara will gain the zone. Gautier pushing it down low. Nicholson leaving it for Stewart. Stewart getting pressured in his own end. Needs a little yeah. help as Niagara takes it away. Purple Eagles accidentally send it yeah. down the ice. The Niagara doing a good job offensively. Picking up where they left off in that third period last night. Really attacking the net, pushing the puck, making Tommy work here, who's eight for eight with saves so far in the first period. Hackett will push it ahead, but getting to it first, Crosley Stewart. And Mahan leaving it over there. Tigers bringing it right ahead as Mahan off his skate accidentally. Moritz getting tangled up. Here's Niagara the other direction as Hackett does not have any numbers, waiting for some help. Hack across ice feed, finding his man. The shot getting knocked down as the defenseman Carlin jumping in. Carlin pushing it back up top as Brockoff doesn't have an angle to shoot at as Mahan. Now Mahan's going to charge at him to the near side to Hackett. Hackett across Ooh. ice feed, and he couldn't connect with Connor Milmock. And the Tigers will lift it out of the zone and get a change in. Close. They're slashing, cutting to the net. Misfired there would have been a great opportunity for the Purple Eagles. Mahan will step off the ice as Wallace will lift it in. Anton Bucata leaving it there for Casero. Now the Tigers turning it up the ice. RIT in transition, always fun to watch. And that will be blown dead, broken up by Lund as Wilkie could not gather that puck. Like the pace though, Gino. Pace is great. On the other ice right now, Aiden Hanson Bucata, yeah. number 23. He. John last night gets a goal, but reading uh, Kevin O'Clubjohn picking splinters, he was one of the players last night that was under the weather, Dude. gutting it out. Yeah. A-plus effort for 23 last night. Just one of those leaders, gritty performance, and a big goal last night, huge goal. Kind of trailing the play set up by Evan Miller. Hanson Bucata chasing after it, and that'll be icing against the Purple Eagles. We had a lot of this last night, particularly in the third. And oh, started in the second and then carried over to the third. What did we have in the second yeah, last night? Was it was it 27 face-offs? Face yeah. Oh, Cheetah. Well, if RIT gets a lead and Niagara wants to play that way. Taking a look around, good crowd here, John. Tonight. Great crowd. It's filed in. Uh-oh. As it's knocked away, Rancliffe pushing it ahead as Ahern going in. Ahern, what a play! Yes. Broken up beautifully on the back check there by Grady Hobbs. Hobbs selling out. And he pushes it ahead. An opportunity for Niagara. Goes by the boards. Now the Tigers going the other direction is Gonzalez. Yes! Scores! Elijah Gonzalez makes it 2 0 RIT. Count it. But think about this. Back the other end. Hobbs comes up with that big play, right? Getting down and dirty on the ice. Starts now the movement the other way. And look at this. This is what Gonzalez does best. Drives the puck. Is he looking to pass? No, he's going to take a shot. And then beating Fisk, two zip Tigers. He's got great vision. You don't know what he's gonna do with the puck. Is he gonna pass it? Is he gonna shoot it? We know he can finish. We know he's great at setting up his teammates. That time he finishes. R Look at this. IT goal, his 16th of the season, scored by number 16, Elijah Gonsalves. With the assist to number 10, John Franco Casero. That's Gonsalves from Casero. Time of the Tigers' goal, 8 43. Elijah Gonsalves getting his 100th career point yeah. last weekend. That was number 16 on the season. Tigers felt they could get to fist. They just got to get 
pucks, more pucks to the net. Doing that tonight. Up to zip. And if you're wondering, all right, this Jason Lammers a head coach. If there's another quick one, go to the goalie change. Really doesn't have an option. Mitchell Day has only appeared in two games no. this year. I think you ride Fisk, and I have to. That's it. You really can't go to somebody who hasn't seen any action. As the Tigers in their own end, RIT showing their strength here so far. 2-0. Perfect start for the Tigers. Get that early save by Scarfoni, then the Tigers strike, then another big save. This couldn't have gone any better so far for Wayne Wilson and his team. Casero gets the only assist on that, but boy, oh boy, if we could just vote in an assist for, for Grady Hobbs on that play. Josh. You know, he sold out as you called yeah. it. I mean, he got it sold out and prevented a possible grade A look for Niagara. Andrew turning ahead, he's got Jeffrey down low. Andrew going in, fires, and the save is gonna be made by Fisk. With 10.04 remaining in the first. Attack mode. Tigers just attacking. This is a team, as we know all too well, they get goals in bunches. Simon Isabel to take the draw for the Tigers. He's got Andrew to his left. Tigers winning another draw as Micro Giannakis from the wall gets held up. Niagara the exit. Hackett gets it ahead. He'll dump it in. Past the midway point here of the first. Next nine icing whistle will be the media timeout as Brockhoff on the wall pushes it down low. Tigers able to clean this up, however, as it goes over to the far side. RIT looking for the pass ahead, and it goes off someone. Yeah. Would it hit somebody on the bench? On the bench. Yeah. Okay. And we will step aside. Tigers leading here 2 0. This is the RIT Sports Network. Yeah, Tiger fans are dancing. They're having some fun. Two nothing here as the faceoff will be in the RIT end. Just a great start for the Tigers, and now I mean the Niagara, a team that's really not built, you know, to come back. You got, I know it's a lot of time to go, but they like to play with a lead. As even though Niagara against RIT in terms of the power play has not been successful, that. It's certainly a key here tonight. Stay out of the box. It's Isabel, yeah. one on one. Simon Isabel takes it behind the net. He's got Micro Giannakis. Now, Micro Giannakis will drop back to his defensive position as Niagara brings it ahead. And Micro Giannakis playing smart hockey there. Delayed offside, and the Tigers will take their time here yep. as Crosley Stewart and switch out the personnel here as we're under nine minutes to go in the first. Well, that's a great point, uh, Gino, about I mean, got the lead. You don't want to give Niagara any opportunity in the power play. Playing smart now is important for the Tigers, more so with this lead. Well, talking with Wayne Wilson, both you uh, tonight and with, with Kimmy last night, is like, what was different in the third? It was, well, well, the Tigers were in the box. That yes. Was They'll be knocked down another block shot again. That was the team captain, Caleb Moritz. Not out of the zone, however. Now the Tigers will push it out. Moritz does not have the numbers, brings it along, looking at his options, pulls up. Moritz trying to center it. 
Takes it to the corner. Now here's going to be Hanson Bucat over to the far side. The shot by Casero. And this yep. will hold on. Coming from Kevin Roach, the last six games, including tonight, RIT outscoring opponents 30 to 6. That's, that's, that's like football numbers here. 30 to 6. <laughs> they are on a mission. This is redemption tour, whatever you want to call it. This team, RIT, is on a mission. And statement time for the Tigers. Nicholson on the wall. Good pinch by Ryan as it'll go down low as Wilkie gets at it, pushing it back. Goes off the back wall. Now Nicholson racing to it again, and he centers it, but then it goes right over to Rodna. Rodna, his outlet pass. Ott will come up with it eventually, and he'll swing it down low. Tigers come up with it and turn it up the ice eventually as Nicholson. Trying to find Gonzalez. Right now, Niagara hemming the Tigers in as Hobbs along the wall. Murray, the defenseman, is down low. Murray pushes it over to the opposite side. Gonzalez was right there along with Gustav Blom to break it up. Face off coming here in the RITM. Okay. Trying to now, you can see the attention keeping Niagara away from Tommy here in the last uh, maybe few minutes. But just staying out of the box, we, didn't, we haven't had a penalty. And uh, so far in this game, last night only one penalty on the Purple Eagles. One penalty call. One penalty call. <laughs> yes, I'm yeah. glad you said it, Gino. Absolutely, because the way they played, only have one penalty. Okay, a little head scratching, but only one penalty on the Purple Eagles. That was called. Niagara's 0 for 5 with the man advantage. Broken stick on the ice, and the Tigers pushing it ahead here. And working his way is going to be Catalano. Catalano off the back wall. Fukukusa pushing it back. Here's Casero. Casero on the high slot. Fires through traffic. And Fukukusa now fighting along the wall, and Niagara will exit. Bringing it ahead. and. Going after the near side, JoJo as Connor Milmock trying to take it away with that broken stick on the ice. Tigers are able to navigate that and lift it out of the zone. Brockhoff is wild trying to give it a look here. Tanner Andrew pushing it in as the line of Simon Isabel back on the ice here for the Tigers. Simon Isabel. Trying to push it to a safe place. However, it'll be picked up by Niagara. It's Carlin who pushes it ahead. Defenseman leading the way. Goes over to the far side where Isabel, that stick again, helping out the Niagara Purple Eagles. Here's Andrew. Andrew fires. Oh. And the save will be made by Jared Fisk. Okay. Kind of getting some, a lot of good looks. Or the Tigers keeping up the pressure. This guy, all right, covers up nicely, but Tigers already with 10 shots in this period. I know it's a big night when our statistician, Peter Mancuso, is wearing paid. What, what is he wearing? How would you describe this tonight? John? I could say that came from Italy, probably Milan or Florence. That's the fashion capital of the world. I don't know. It's the lemon. Or a lemon? Like, like, is it a lemon cello? Is that could what we're be? going for? Pete, last two nights. Green pants uh, for St. Pat. I don't even know Pete. Hey, he's this sharp dressed man. Cue up a little ZZ top right now for, <laughs> for Pistol. Looks outstanding. And he bought that. I think that was a gift from Italy. Wow. Wait a minute. Tiger Bench is upset yes. because Andrew got hit and that puck was gone. Very close to interference. So the officials are going to let him play here tonight, John, as evident by that. Here's going to be Lund, putting it ahead. Ooh, that goes off the back wall. It might have hit something in front. And now Niagara trying to hold it in. They're not able to. Meshot getting tangled up with Hobbs. Isabel, I think that Gonzalez giving it a look. As we're under five minutes to go here in the first. <laughs> now, I've yes. got to correct myself. We've been saying all along the corner crew is booing, and I want to thank Tommy for writing in. Then I asked my son, I'm like, is this true? He's like, yeah, Dad, you didn't know this? 
they're saying shoot. <laughs> like okay. sarcasm. Like, hey, you're shoot at the length of the yeah. ice there. You know? Okay. Stop delaying time. Well, we I th I was with you. I thought they were booing too. <laughs> <laughs> As the Tigers don't have the numbers, they'll push it in down low as Lund. In my mind, I'm just going to imagine them booing. Rodna <laughs> pushing it ahead. As Richard delivering a little bit of a hit there at the end. As Niagara trying to get something going here physically. Two on one the other direction. Here come the Tigers. It's Wilkie going in. Wilkie fires and scores! Counted it! Three, nothing, RIT. Woo! Again, the Tigers get the two on one. They've had a couple of odd man rushes. Their first goal at odd man rush, this one at odd man rush. And the Tigers just pushing the puck again. They catch Niagara napping. They push the puck. This is what the Tigers using that breakaway speed, playmaking skills. The number 21 has been doing it now for three years. Goal number 16 on the season for CW. R-I-T, goal his 16th of the season, scored by number 21, Carter Wilkie. That's Wilkie unassisted. Time of the Tigers' goal, 15-55. The corner crew to count this down. Boy, could you imagine a 3 nothing start? Yeah, just for full disclosure, John and I talked before the game, and we think, how do you imagine this game going tonight? I'm thinking, well, it's going to be close, maybe scoreless after one. Yeah. John, we, we should never underestimate what? the Tigers. No, here. the Tigers, listen, I thought last night, if, if Niagara was going to get them, it was last night, considering they were missing a couple players because of illness. you got Cody still out. They outshoot them 39-24, right? No. They had a two-man advantage. It felt like, okay, last night was the night to get them, but the Tigers right now, and they, listen, RIT knew they could get the Fisk, make them work, and tonight, they've owned them here in the first period. Again, that, two goals in two weekends by Carr Wilkie, they're just, oh, NHL type of goals where you're just gonna pick your spot, the quick release. It's unlike anything else in Atlantic hockey, it really is. As the puck goes over to the near side is Fukakuso. And now no. the uh, corner crew to start the chant, and if you know, you know. 3 nothing RIT. Pistol with a stat the last two times, RIT won three straight AHA tournament playoff games. They went on to win the tournament, qualify for the Division I National Playoffs. The tournament, the dance. Gloved out of the air by Fukakusa. Tigers three on two. Wild going in wild. And that's going to be a big block by Brockoff. And now Carlin trying to turn it ahead here. Rodna as Niagara. Boy, they looked kind of tired coming out of the zone there, John, as Rodna well, on the far side. I think that early save by Tommy, it was like, uh, it was one of those indicators what kind of night it was going to be. That should have been a goal for Niagara. And then the Tigers strike, what, a minute later? I'm not gonna say dagger or game set match, but that was an early tell. Maybe what was in store for tonight. Michael Giannakis as the Tigers tag up. Jeffrey along the corner trying to go at Brockhoff. Rodna, and these guys have been on the ice here a little bit. That's gonna be lifted out. Tigers chasing after it as Niagara will work in a change with 140 remaining here in the first three. Wow. Nothing. RIT. Everything has gone their way. Everything. And they have dominated the ice here in the first 20 minutes. Casero knocking that down to the far side where Andrew pushing it ahead to Simon Isabel getting held up. Ziski pushing it down. Just too many odd man runs. They've had two two on ones here in the opening period for our team. They've, they've cashed in both times. Gautier, and that's offside. I mean, yeah. Luke Milmock offside by uh, Country Mile there with 104 remaining here in the first. Close out this first if you're RIT. Go to the dressing room in command. 
Still a lot of hockey to go. We still got 40 minutes to go, but so important to close out this final minute if you're RIT. Well, Kevin Roche, the intermission report will be coming up, and we can pass along AIC getting the first goal there. So Ooh. they're five minutes ahead of us. One nothing AIC after one at the Hart Center in Worcester against Holy Cross. Pushed ahead, here's Wilkie, he's got Hobbs ahead. Hobbs off oh. to the races, Hobbs going in, Hobbs and Brockhoff making the save and he pushes it back to his goaltender. Oh, is that Gonzalez crashing down? Looking for a little cleanup. Looking for a rebound, put back. There's Hobbs pushing the puck and he gets it poked away and then watch Gonzalez. Okay, Fisk able to cover it up. Well, the speed, certainly, we talked about it last night, Gino. It, it certainly, the scales are slanted towards RIT when you talk about speed and quickness. And uh, crowd not liking that. It was like a lacrosse kind of let me go down low, almost lay on the puck. Still the Tigers here with a chance. Trying to hold it in the zone. Coming up with a Catalano, but then he gives it up. As going hard into the wall is Wild, while getting back up as Luke Milmock gains the zone. Luke Milmock pushing it oh. ahead. And with 10 seconds remaining, Tommy Scarfoni makes the save. Okay. And here comes the chippiness. Uh, if this is only going to get chippier if the score maintains this way. Because frustration will set in for Niagara. But three zip, win this draw and move on to the second period. Face off coming up here and the Tigers certainly would like to get to the dressing room up three nothing here. And knowing this Wayne Wilson's gonna send out Carter Wilkie to take a draw here. For Horn Cross for Niagara. Pretty big draw here. It's going to be won by Niagara, but they can't do anything nope. with it. And this will pretty much do it here as Gonzalez pushing it up ahead. And what a period. Listen to this crowd. Three yeah. nothing. Tigers, John Vittoria. They've outscored opponents six zip in the first period of this Atlantic hockey tournament. Their top line, Wilkie gets a goal, Gonzalez gets a goal. And their top rookie line cashes in as well. Everybody has a point. Scarfoni set the tone with that save in the first 40 seconds of this game. Kevin Roche in the intermission report coming your way next. We are through 20. The Tigers here in game two, up 3 0 on the RIT Sports Network.
20 minutes of game two of the Atlantic Hockey Semifinal Series from the Gene Policini Center at RIT. Tigers strike early. They strike often and lead 3-0 after one. Highlights coming your way in just a bit, oh boy. But first, Atlantic Hockey under new leadership for the first time in two decades this season as former John Carroll Athletic Director Michelle Morgan has taken over the reins. Morgan made a stop here in Rochester earlier this season and shared her thoughts on the current state of the league and what she envisions for the future. Michelle Morgan has spent the majority of her professional life working in college athletics. But after five years as athletic director at John Carroll, Morgan wanted to get back to her roots. The opportunity to be the commissioner of Atlantic Hockey and College Hockey America was really something that I couldn't pass up. Um, it brings me back to my roots as a former ice hockey player and it still keeps me involved in college athletics just in a different way, in a more focused way in the sport of hockey and really seeing this as an opportunity to take my skill set and different experience working in the NHL, working in college hockey and really putting them all together in one opportunity to, to grow the game. But one of her biggest challenges since taking over is changing the perception of both leagues. There's a lot of um, misperceptions out there about what our teams and league is, um, you know, what we're doing and, and competing with, but also what's happening off the ice and in the communities and in the classroom. And so um, I think that that's an opportunity to course correct that narrative um, and then allow, you know, people to really see and learn so that they understand who we are. We, we don't have the brand recognition that perhaps some of our competitive competitor leagues do, um, but we'll get there. I'm confident in that. A conference rebrand is already in the works as the men's and women's leagues will merge into one next season. It's two separate you know, organizations of teams and operation can be a challenge, right? And so we weren't really working as smart as we could be in, in some regards. So I think that this opportunity, we're working with a, with a partner firm that really is an expert in this, that has worked with uh, college uh, entities, organizations, conferences to go through a rebrand, but really understand the essence of the history and the story to then best encapsulate who we are and, and who we're going to be going forward. The new league will be expanding too. Just last month, Delaware announced its women's program will join the conference in 2025. As for adding new men's programs, that's actively being explored too. On the women's side with six teams, soon to be seven, we really have to be conscious of our numbers and we can't let that AQ be at risk. Right, and so how are we doing that? We're the smallest conference uh, in numbers right now, and so, but I, I'm looking to not just add to add, right? We need to make sure that the institution is a good fit for, for our organization and the teams that make up um, our conference, and so that we're adding value in, in ways other than just saying, hey, let's just add to add a team. Our geographic footprint, especially on the men's side, is quite, quite large. Um, we, we span so many states and three time zones that it can be a challenge at time with, uh, with travel and that student athlete experience or missed class time. Um, so those are all things that administrators have to take into consideration when they're looking at potential and prospective programs that can be added. The women's program at Mercyhurst and the men's program here at RIT are still the only ones to have reached the Frozen Four. But the new commissioner believes this conference can consistently contend in the future. But there's a lot of parity in our league and there's a lot of parity in college hockey, right? That any given night a puck bounces one way or one team's battling injuries or you don't know what's going to happen, right? It's, it's a game of odds in some ways. And so that's part of the reason why we come and we play the game and we engage in what we do because we both start the game, you know, first, first face off anything can happen. And so I think that absolutely without question in my mind, right? We may have some uphill battles to get to that point or to be there a little bit more regularly, but there's no question in my mind that a team from College Hockey America or Atlantic Hockey can make it that far and be crowned a, a, a champion. Yeah, that would be something to see. Now, as far as the merger goes, Morgan told me that the league could keep one of its current names or may launch a brand new identity beginning July 1st. She also touched on scheduling and how she's focusing on that to help improve the league's chances of getting more than just the conference champion into the NCAA tournament each year.
we come back. On the intermission report, we'll have highlights from that wild first period. Plus, we'll go ringside to Kim Coffee for an update from RIT head coach Wayne Wilson. That's next. It's 3 0 Tigers right now on the RIT Sports Network. Back here at the Coliseum on the intermission report, RIT up three after one. Well, we know the Tigers have been good this season, but since January, they've been their best. RIT unbeaten in 13 of their last 15 games dating back to late January. In fact, January 19th with three wins coming here in the postseason as the Tigers entered the night with a 1-0 series lead in the semifinals here over Niagara. The Purple Eagles facing elimination here in game two. Let's show you what happened. Some great action early on in this one. Just 30 seconds in. Niagara centering here. Carter Rancliff right in front for what looked to be a sure goal, but Tommy Scarfoni with the big time kick save for the Tigers. And RIT would answer right back. Matthew Wild, the outlet to Christian Catalano to start the rush and watch the perfectly timed feed to Tyler Fukakusa for his ninth goal of the year. He's back in the lineup feeling better. Oh, the Tigers feeling good too. One nothing RIT, just over 11 minutes remaining. RIT on the prowl again. Elijah Gonzalez, watch this, going top shelf, his 16th of the year, 43rd of his Tiger career for the fifth year, two nothing. R.I.T. And they weren't done, as you know, just over four minutes to go. Another two on one rush. Carter Wilkie keeps it and scores. What a start for the Tigers as they lead Niagara three nothing. An impressive first 20 minutes as we take a look inside the numbers. Tigers with three goals on 12 shots for Wilkie. Number 16 on the season. Also number 43 on his Tiger career. Number 16 for Gonzalez, as I mentioned, and for Tyler Fukukusa back in the lineup after missing last night with an illness. It's number nine on the first year's season. A clean first period, not a single penalty called. And of course, that's sure to change as we proceed here tonight. Well, following the first, our Kim Coffey caught up with RIT head coach Wayne Wilson. And coach wanted a fast start, Kimmy. A clean, fast start here tonight. And boy, did his team deliver in the first 20 minutes. Yeah, they sure did, Kevin. And, and coach really felt like, he said, honestly, he felt like it's been an even period in terms of how hard the teams have played and the opportunities they've had. He said the difference maker he, is goals. He credited Tommy Scarfoni for keeping his team in this one early. And he said Niagara gave up some odd man rushes and his team's just been able to take advantage. I asked, you know, how have the guys been able to maintain such a clean game so far? And he said, well, let's wait here. There's still a lot of game left to be played. Uh, no one's celebrating yet, Kevin. No one's taking their foot off the gas. Coach said his guys just need to keep pushing forward. Don't look at the scoreboard and just keep playing. 
Yeah, that's the key here tonight to try to get this thing closed out. A long way to go, as you mentioned, Kim. Thank you so much. In other Atlantic Hockey semifinals tonight, game two between Holy Cross and AIC, and the Yellow Jackets looking to even the series in force game three tomorrow. And a good start as Nico Somerville has given AIC the one nothing lead after one over Holy Cross. They've actually just started the second out there in Worcester. Today, the Tigers opening Liberty League Conference play in women's lacrosse against Ithaca at the Doug Mayfield. We have the highlight second quarter. Tigers pull closer thanks to Carissa Hillowa, who scores here. Tigers back within two, but Ithaca would settle down and go on a run to end the half as Maisie Veach is going to get loose and score unassisted. Part of four unanswered for the Bombers. They led 11-5 at the half. Third quarter, Tigers, they kept chipping away, though. Serafina Kizilgolf, big season for her so far. One of her four goals, team leading four goals here on the day. Tigers back within four again, but that's as close as they would get as they suffer a defensive breakdown here. Elizabeth Green going in easily, unassisted, and the streak is over. The four-game win streak over for the Tigers. They dropped their Liberty League opener by a final of 20 to 12 today. Meanwhile, in Division Three men's lacrosse, just the seventh meeting between uh, number three RIT and number two Tufts, but the first ever regular season meeting as the two are facing down in the Mustang Classic in Maryland, and RIT with the big win, 7-0 and oh on the season. Statement win, they beat the Jumbo 16 to 11. Baseball today. Uh, all the baseball team completing their trip down to Florida. They lose to Muhlenberg 10 to 3 to wrap things up, finishing 2 and 6. They're back home on Wednesday on the RIT Sports Network. We'll get you back for the second period next with John and Gene. RIT up 3 right now on the RIT Sports Network. Love the band, the students yep. who are coming back a little early for spring break here, John. Classes starting back up Monday. Being treated to possible sweep by the Tigers. Still, you know, 40 minutes of hockey to go, but um, uh, that period certainly the tone was set by Tommy, and then the Tigers able to cash in on two two on ones. That's really the story of the uh, story of the game so far. Top line delivering two of those goals, Gonzalez yeah. and Wilkie and Fukakusa after missing last night, cashing in. It takes an odd carom off the glass break for Niagara, but then Scarfoni wow. able to make that glove save just like at the start of the first, making the save on this line, John. And that's the big advantage. I mean, nothing against this, but well, you've got not only arguably the best goalie in this conference, but one of the best goalies in the country. That, again, that... That slants or tilts everything towards RIT. Better skill players in terms of speed. And when you have Tommy Scarfoni, man, it's huge advantage, huge advantage. Gonzalez pushing it ahead as Hobbs on the far side will opt to play it down low. Knee shock playing it over to the near side for Niagara. The Tigers to control as Hanson Bucata pushes it over to Gonzalez. Elijah getting taken down in front, but no call was Hobbs. Hobbs now going after Meshock, tying up Meshock. He's going to win that battle. Hobbs taking it away and pushing it back up top as the Tigers working it around to the near side. Gonzalez gets to it first. Some good pressure here by the Tigers as Gonzalez swatted away by Gautier. Now Meshock backhanding it out here as Prohrenkroft, pardon me, pushing it down low. Opportunity, good poke check there by Scarfoni. Horan cross in front of that corner crew with Ott digging it out. 
hot in the corner as Wilkie comes away with it for the Tigers. Gonzalez as this line will have to step off at some point as Wild. Tigers piecemeal in that change as Casero sends it ahead. Tigers tap it in, they get that change in. A little more than a minute and a half gone by as Wild along the near wall. Coming up with it is Rodna. Rodna through the neutral zone, trying to split the Tiger defense. Scarfoni puts the puck in a safe spot along the near side. Kukusa getting held up here as the Tigers are hemmed in right now. Richard delivering a little bit of a hit here. Here's Wild on the far side. Ukakusa pushing it out. Catalano, here's a two-on-one the other direction. Catalano going ahead with Kevin Scott jumping in. And oh. the save is made, the rebound, and this time covering up his fist. Kevin Scott, that would have been an interesting time for his first collegiate goal. I thought for sure, I thought, but, you know, Catalano held on to that puck. Kind of waiting, Scott comes bottom of your screen. He's crashing in the net with Fisk. Able to make the initial save and then able to scramble and find the rebound. AIC's up two zip over Holy Cross. 15 minutes left in the second mm. period. Wouldn't mind seeing that series go three. Simon Isabel to take the draw. Of course, Holy Cross winning in three last year in this round, the semifinals. We all know that. This time they're home. As now along the far wall, Tigers holding it up. Crosley Stewart doing a good job. Stewart coming up with it at the point. Stepping up Isabel on the switch there is Andrew. Sending it back. Stewart sending it ahead over the crossbar that goes. Michael Giannakis along the wall with a little bit of a pinch. Jeffrey pushes it down low. Isabel. The Tigers continue to grind here, John. Looks like they're on a power play. <laughs> it's kind of the long shot. Fisk making the save. Finally, Niagara to bring it out. And the Tigers able to come ahead. Isabel waiting at that blue line. Was maybe thinking home run pass. Isabel now chasing after it. We're going to have an icing call against the Tigers with 16, 55 remaining in the second. It's been a good start here for R.I. team. Oh, there we go. Yep, so he caught a puck in the stands, I'm being told tonight. Very that nice. Nice. Go ahead, John. You got a good stat there. Well, I mean, you think about you think about the Tigers, it's it's a great start. They're out shooting Niagara five zip in this period so far. I thought Niagara generated some looks, but right now, the Tigers really controlling the pace in the ice here in the first three and a half, almost four minutes of this second period. Doing a great job of really neutralizing the Purple Eagles. Pushing it ahead. Here's going to be Ahern. Backhanding it, going yeah. in front of Radcliffe, who's denied by Whoa. Scarfoni. Wow, Tommy does it again. The big saves at big times of the game. We saw it last night. We saw it at the start of this game. And then crucial save again by Scarfoni. Jock delivering it down low. It's got to be in Niagara's head at this point. What do we got to do to get one by? Here's the shot from the outside. Knocked down in front. Tigers controlling. Hanson Bucata faking the pass. It'll shove it down low. Is getting knocked into the wall with Moritz. Sending it ahead. Oh. Stick save made. Moritz was right out in front. Mahan gets to it first. Sending it back up top. Hanson Bucata tapping it over to Casero. And that'll be blocked. And the faceoff coming up here in the Niagara end. Rancleft with a block shot for Niagara. Just, it's like they feed off of the save from Tommy. And by the way, Tiger 17 0 1 when leading after the first period. 20 0 1 when they have a two or more goal lead. Oh, <laughs> Gito. I'm not going to say 21 0 1. No, no, no. But I mean, listen, they know how to close what those stats say. Gautier, it'll go over to the near wall as the Tigers are not allowing Tiger to exit the zone here. Philippe Jacques delivering a little bit of a hit. And the Tigers will control here at center ice. All three goals scored by RIT in the first period. It's a good start here so far in the second for the Tigers. Love the start. The intensity is there. Energy's there to start the second. Tyler Mahan with a battling with Ziski. 
Moritz is over there as well. And Hanson Bucato hold it in. Sends it over to Mahan. Mahan trying to get away from the defender for Horncross. For Horncross with the block. Fans chanting RIT there, appreciating here the efforts of the Tigers. As the centering pass, Moritz in front. Wilkie jumping in, and Wilkie is knocked down. Oh. And, and then getting held up in front was Mahan. And then the giveaway here, Gautier going down low. Stewart, Casero coming up with it for the Tigers. Turning it right back up the ice. Here's Elijah Gonzalez. He's got one of the three goals tonight. Wilkie also has a goal. Gonzalez right on yep. the front, the shot. Oh. Casero jumping in. Casero off the side of the net. And Niagara will clear here as Rodna brings it ahead. JoJo jumping into the perfect time. And a great break up there on the back check there by Gonzalez to break up that odd man rush. Here's Rodna in a battle. Now here's going to be Nicholson on the near side of Hobbs. Ryan Nicholson will swing it around to the far side. Wilkie's out in front. And Niagara was ready for it that time. It's helping the Tigers here too, John. Uh, no penalties so far. No, it's here. been a clean, it's been a clean game so far for the Tigers. Excellent. Excellent effort by RIT playing very, very smart. Gorshak tapping it over as Veaton getting tied up by Blom coming up with a Milmock centering pass that goes over to the near wall. Brockoff going down low. He sends it wide. That'll go all the way out of the zone. Uh, actually goes out of play. 13.38 remaining here in the second. Watching that last sequence moments ago, you could, I wanted, you could just see JoJo just coming down the ice. The only thing is like, are they gonna see him? Is Gonzalo, uh, what am I thinking? You know yeah. he's gonna see him, and he yeah. saw him, yep. and it created a great A look for the Tigers. To watch that unfold, how they pushed the puck so quickly, the vision, unbelievable. The Tigers just really clicking tonight so far. Head coach Wayne Wilson has this team primed and ready to go. There's no question about it. He and his staff, Brian Hills, Dave Insolaco, doing a fantastic and, job. And like you said, I think they take their cue from Wayne. Wayne, talking to him in the pregame, steady Eddie. Yep, not going to get too high, not going to get no. too low. It's, uh, what Very is it? Very focused. I'm not sure what the call is here. Wait. They're going to put the face off outside of the zone. Yeah. All right. Tyler Fukakusa winning the draw for the Tigers as Michael Giannakis sends it over to his partner, Stewart. Catalano going ahead. Catalano takes it to the corner. Defenders around him as Wild is over there to help out. Tiger fans making noise here at the Palacini. Ziski on the far side as Fukukusa is out there. Just a little longer and he creates the turnover and it's going to be swatted away. Foot race there as it'll be an icing call against Niagara. As we see, no penalties so far no. here tonight. <laughs> That's the story. Tigers doing everything, everything right so far here through nearly uh, 30 minutes of hockey. Simon Isabel to take the draw for RIT. Going against Wallace, so. It'll be Jeffrey dropping it back for the Tigers. Hanson Bucata walking in. Hanson Bucata fires it wide. Andrew comes up with it. He gets tripped oh. up and uh, they let that go. As that'll be sent in and Scarfoni with Purple Eagles bearing down on him is gonna play it safe. Play it safe, easy glove save. Yeah, just play it safe. Not necessarily, not necessarily take any chances. Well, you'll love this if you're the Tigers. And just keep doing this, stay out of the box, take shots from the blue line. In control right now, Gino, for the Tigers. Hanson Bucata. 
Over to the far side is Andrew. And that'll be chipped ahead by Jeffrey. Carlin swinging around the far side. And that will go all the way for another icing. And this has uh, shades of what we saw last night, right. John. Yes. Yeah, second period. Very similar to last night. Niger with just two shots on yeah. goal so far this period. That's it. Hey, Coach Wayne Wilson in his 25th year here at RIT. Helping guide this team the transition from Division Three to Division One. Frozen Four appearance in the year 2010. As it'll be Mahan pushing it over. Moretz coming up with it. Moretz swinging it back to Scott. Scott! Big Pat save is going to be made by Fisk. The outlet pass for Horncroft to dump it in. Nicholson along the near side to Moritz as the Tigers here will bring it out. And that should be waved off. It is as Carlin hinges it over to the far side. Niger trying this again, going after it. Here will be Richard. Richard has his centering pass attempt blocked by Kevin Scott. So Kevin Scott going up and down here. In oh. front that goes. And that'll be blocked as Rodna had a great look there. Rodna getting it back, poked out of the zone by Nicholson. What a play by 24. As the Tigers here to dump it in, and they'll change on the fly. Niger trying to catch him in that change as Rodna puts on the brakes as Michael Giannakis was right there to defend. Out of the zone this goes. Gonzalez zipping through the neutral zone. He's got Hobbs going down the middle. Gonzalez bringing it Ooh. back and just through the skates of Crosley Stewart. A two yep. on two the other direction as Richard dropping it back. Tigers again get back defensively. They've done a great job of that tonight. Getting back, retreating, getting in position negate any type of opportunities for Niagara. Swung ahead, a Wilkie couldn't touch that. He knew it was offside. And so it'll be Aiden Hanson Bucata. Along the near wall, this will go. It's Casero now stepping onto the ice to join his defensive partner. Into the zone, this goes. As the backhand goes off the side of the net, Hackett gloving it out of the air, puts it down on the ice. Hobbs will get it out and down the ice. Past the midway point here, the second. Next non-icing whistle will be the media timeout. As we break this game up into chunks, the Tigers enjoying a three-goal lead. Gonzalez along the wall. The Purple Eagles working in deep. Beaton will take a look around, playing it behind the net. Casero tying his man up, Connor Milmock. Back up top, this goes. Ziski from way out, and Scarfoni sees that one cleanly. With 9.30 remaining here in the second, we step aside. The Tigers leading 3-0 on the RIT Sports Network. Yeah, Cotton Eye Joe playing yes. here in Tiger Pass. <laughs> right on cue, yeah, get up and have a little bit of fun here. Base off here in the Tiger end. As Casero pushes it over, Hanson Bucata over to Catalano, who lifts it out. 
Fukakusa pushing it ahead over to the far side. Wild, his shot's gonna be blocked. Carlin leaving it there, and now he'll take it himself. All three goals coming in the first for the Tigers. They regain the zone as Catalano bringing it in. Catalano, the backhand! Ooh. Last second, I think getting a piece of that was the goaltender Fisk. Ranclaff leading it there. Wallace has his pocket pick as Fukakus puts it to the far side of Wild. And then Wild getting held on the far side as everyone saw that. Except the officials apparently, they let that go. That was the team captain Ahern just kind of holding the leg of Wild. Nicholson coming up with it. And again, Scarfoni yep. gloving it with Richard right there. Easy, safe play. Easy glove save for Tommy. He'll take that all day. Been a methodical approach here by the Tigers in period number two. Couple of good looks, methodical, great goaltending. Coming up with some big defensive plays when need be. But right now, just kind of, I wouldn't say coasting or cruising, but Eye on the prize right now. Just playing smart in this second period. Gustav Blom along the wall as Tanner Andrew pushes it out. Simon Isabel trying to race after it. That goes all the way back here, and oh. Fisk will have to cover up. Like that, get the, now the draw right to his left. Uh, that's the thing, that's really the story. Tommy with some big saves, Fisk, albeit it was two on ones. Very tough, didn't come up with the big saves when he needed. Carter Wilkie to take the draw, winning the draw. As Gonzalez swinging around. Again, I go back to that goal, John. Just the, the, the velocity and picking the corner, yep. <laughs> it's just... Carter Wilkie as that's going to be poke checked away. Wilkie now in the near corner pushing it back. And uh, that goes out of play. Another faceoff coming up here in the Niagara. Yeah, the Wilkie goal was dynamic. Just dynamic. Just and then the passing on the on, on the first goal. And then Gonzalez. Just, just a great playmaker is Gonzalez. And a finisher. Tigers come, <laughs> come up with it as Gonzalez, another block shot, another face off coming up here. It's going to be that way. It's a stop and go right now. And the corner crew loves this, singing all hey, the small things here. You'll keep, you look up, it's still three zip. 19 shots for the Tigers, 14 for Niagara. When you got Scarfoni, you like your chances. A lot with a three goal lead. Hobbs in the corner as Gonzalez comes up with it. Gonzalez looking to dish it off. Sends it to Wilkie who shoots. And we're going to have a penalty coming up. And I believe this is on Niagara. Yep. Hooking call Wilkie. against the Purple Eagles. Boy, Wilkie just a great pass. And then Wilkie with quick shot. Big save there by Fisk. That was a big stop. You feel one more goal. It could be dagger time. Jack Richard taking uh, yeah. the seat in the box. So for only the second time this weekend, the Tigers on the power play. So Wilkie, laser focus. Tigers win the draw. Escasero on the wall. Sends it over. Now Niagara had two shorthanded goals. That was back in February against the Tigers. Turning the game around. Tigers know this, of course. Wilkie along the wall. Sending it back up top. Casero getting open. Feet a little off there. So JoJo. Again, leading all NCAA defensemen <laughs> now with 17 goals on the season. Wilkie on the wall. Wilkie. Swings it back to Hanson Bucata. Hanson Bucata, the oh. rebound was in front, and it's going to be swatted Ooh. down the ice. Just avoided. He had Wild there in front. That puck went to the right of him. 
Good look, though, for the Tigers. 114 remaining in the man advantage as it will be Wilkie over the red line. Wilkie putting on the brakes, dropping it back. Casero walking in. Casero fires and sends that wide. Oh, he got good look there as Wilkie in the corner. 55 seconds remaining the power play. Wild dropping down low. Casero swings it down low. Gonzalez gets hit in the back, keeps his footing. Casero is going to be able to hold it in. He sends it over, gets it back. Casero walking in. Jojo Casero takes it to the corner. 33 remaining in the power play. As this unit, if you're not familiar, they, they can stay out here for the full two minutes. Hanson Bucata along the wall at the point. Centering oh. pass knocked down and cleared down the ice. And that yep. will pretty much do it. Tried to center it rather than take the shot. So the Tigers... Still some time. Gonzalez zipping it in. Ooh. Philippe Jacques down low. And Brockhoff holding him up. Casero couldn't glove it down to hold it in the zone. And we're back to even strength here. But in the end, it's just another two minutes gone by here. The Tigers still enjoying a 3-0 lead. Ott has his pocket picked. Another good back check by the Tigers. That one by Caleb Moritz. My hand on the near wall is Micro Giannakis shoveling it to the far side. Well, Moritz is behind the defense there. You saw that too, John, Yeah, didn't he you? put this stick up. They were looking for the home run. Fans wanted a call. They don't get it as my hand is on the near side. Oh! Mahan! Oh, it's going to be denied in the last second. That net was open. Kevin Scott playing it down low. Tigers spread out here. They're not on the power play. It just looks that way. As Philippe Jacques, as Mahan gets upended in front of the net, Ranclef to push it out of the zone. Wow. Bouncing puck that Scarfoni will leave there for Nicholson. Kevin Scott behind the net. He pushes it over as Wild. Tigers get it out of the zone eventually. Icing waved off here as Murray will go back at it in his own end with 4.17 remaining in the second. Off of wild skate and uh, nearly Ooh. making contact with head coach Jason oh Lammers. So nah. Tigers just inches away from, I think, sealing it. For Kakusa to take the draw against for Horincrofts. One will go after it in his own end. Wild giving it a look here as Hanson kind of stepping up to hold up the play. Tigers will send it right back in. Lund getting pressured by Catalano as Fukakusa nearly took it away for Horncroft along the near wall. Cross ice feed. And Niger slowly working it up the ice. Finally, they'll work it in. Casero is able to get to it for the Tigers, and he'll try to lift it out. Fukakusa for RIT. It's four shots on goal here for the Purple Eagles it, this period. It's been really one-sided with shots. It's 10-4. Catalano gloving it out of the air. And that'll be swung over to the far side. Off the glass is Crosley Stewart. Tigers working it ahead as Andrew will tip it in. Simon Isabel trying to anticipate where the puck is going, and it'll come out of the zone here as Hackett to bring it ahead. He'll push it along the near wall where Crosley Stewart will send it over to the far side. Beaten over there. It'll be held in to the corner this goes. Can the Tigers get to the dressing room, John, up by three? As Andrew's behind the defense, he's got to wait. Goes off the back glass. Andrew trying to get to it in a battle with Carlin. Andrew Ooh. taking on all comers there. Andrew getting a little business in the back there. And now Niagara to come out of the zone. It's a three on three. Gustav Blom getting to it first. He'll send it over to the corner crew side of the ice. Tanner Andrew turning it up the ice. Out of the zone is Carter Wilkie. 
As the Tigers work in that change, here comes a rush here for RIT as Grady Hobbs actually gets held up. Oh, yeah. And a result, the uh, offside call. The Tigers just do a good job of just moving their skates and sticks. Able to knock passes down, prevent rushes. And a workmanlike uh, period for the Tigers. Right, you'd love this. Or you didn't score, but you didn't give up a goal. And I think it's huge if they go to the dressing room up three goals. She liked her chances in the final 20 minutes with a three-goal lead. I'll have to swing it back here as on the near side, Meshock. And that's going to go for icing. Yep, yep as uh, the whistle will blow. 152 face-off coming up here to the Niagara end. Yeah, close the period, Tigers. Right, so far, you haven't given up a goal, knock on wood, a five-on-five -five goal this weekend. The one they huh. got, what do you think about it, yeah. the Tigers? Yeah, that was, uh, extra skater was on the ice yep. there. Uh, so they've done a great job defensively, and Tommy's just dialed in. And to Bucata, just through traffic, trying to throw it in front, good idea. Out of the zone, this will go. Tigers tag up, and now they'll go to work as Meshock. And the crowd here, well, I thought they were going to tell him to shoot. Instead, it'll go ahead. Casero, here's Rashard, centering pass, and the Tigers are right there to clean it up. Look who's in position, right? Aiden gets back. That's what they've done tonight so well. Casero sending it ahead to Gonzalez. The Tigers, Carter Wilkie, the creator. Gets upended, and now the Tigers coming ahead. Here's Michael Giannakis going in, shoots and scores! Dimitri Micro Giannakis! John, that is his first of the season, it's 4 nothing. Let me say it, dagger time for the Tigers. Count it, first of the year, couldn't come at a better time for the Tigers. D -d -d dagger, <laughs> R-I-T. Yes, sir. Dimitri Micro Giannakis, he's just a block shot machine he for is. this team. Great hockey IQ, and that's the time Last you minute jump of play in, in the John, period. Last that. minute of play. Moritz along the wall. Tigers want more as the shot, and then it'll be gloved. It was going wide, but Fisk will hold on. What a goal for RIT, making this 4 nothing. I mean, you're just thinking, can he get to the dressing room up three zip? Then they add one, and now you just, you feel for Niagara, deflated at this point. Four zip. I mean, so it's the ninth different Tiger to score in the playoffs through just four games. Balance, Gino. Whew. You're not kidding. Micro Giannakis, well, he's thinking more, sends it on net, why not? Purple Eagles to bring it ahead here. Under a minute to go is for Horncroft, leaving it there, jumping in. Carlin shoots that wide. Leap shock, and now the Tigers, what do we have? We have a penalty coming yeah. up on RIT, the interference call with 29 seconds. Boy, you hate to see that. Yeah, so for the first time tonight, it'll be Nicholson going to the box here for two. Been a well-played period by the Tigers. Business-like, workman-like. John, there are good penalties, and I actually I like this penalty by, uh, yeah. you know, just you, you don't want to give a goal late no. here. So. And your PK, we know what it's done to the, not, the Purple Eagles all year, not only this weekend, but all season long. So absolutely, Gino. Couldn't agree more. Wilkie, as Ott will hold it, Niagara has an opportunity to get a shot off here as Rancliff along the wall. Big sequence here for the Purple Eagles here if they want any shot. Ott sending it ahead and no rebound given up by Tommy. Tommy dialed in, focused, can of corn. Getting that clean window there. Not really, I stand corrected. Guy's bearing down on him. Able to just cover up and no rebounds. We saw that last night and in, uh, especially tonight. 
Hobbs as that'll go down the ice as they announce the goal, closing seconds here in the period. As the Purple Eagles send it in and the horn will sound. We are through 40 minutes of play and RIT is up four nothing in game two. Well, you love your chances. Uh, I mean, listen, up four goals, you're 20 minutes away from getting back to the finals, unlike that period by the Tigers. Really did, they had the one penalty there at the end of the period, but the big goal by Mike Rogianak is huge for RIT. And, and, and every opportunity that Niagara has had, not just tonight, but this weekend, and there have been a few, but Tommy, again, go back to the opening minute of play in this yep. game, John. Well, that's the difference. Uh, I mean, look, we can talk about Wilkie, we can talk about this and that, but the difference is Fist versus Scarfoni. Huge advantage, RIT. Not even close. 4 nothing. 20 minutes to go. Of course, the Tigers will be shorthanded to begin the third period. Dimitri Mikrogiannakis getting his first goal of the season. It's a great start here. And uh, uh, Dimitri standing by with our Kim Coffee. Dimitri, not a bad time for your first goal of the season. You come up big, scoring your team's fourth goal tonight. Really feels like you guys are in sync tonight. How are you able to build an, a lead with 20 minutes left in the game? Yeah, just hard work. I mean, we're doing the little things right. We're doing what works. We're sticking to our game plan, not trying to do too much. And uh, if we just keep doing those hard things, it can be an easy game for us. So we got to stick with that. What do you have to do now to take a little pressure off of Tommy here in, in the last 20 minutes? Uh, key word would probably be puck management. Manage the puck, don't let them get it. When we get it, get it out of our zone, into their zone, work them, wear them down. Uh, try to limit their shots because he's been standing on his head tonight like every game. So uh, if we can do that, we can we can help him out and he like he helps us out every day. One final period, how much gas is left in the tank here? As much gas as it needs. Dimitri, thanks so much. Good luck in the third. Thank you, I appreciate it. Gene and John, back to you guys. Dimitri Mikrogiannakis, a psychology major from Aurora, Ontario, as he gives the Tigers a 4-0 lead. Kevin Roche in the intermission report coming your way next here on the RIT Sports Network. Forty minutes down in game two of this Atlanta Hockey semifinal series between the Tigers and the Purple Eagles. Tigers at another and now lead by four after two here at the Poliseum. Well, it has been eight years since RIT played for an Atlanta Hockey Championship, but that drought can end with a victory here tonight. And not only would they earn a spot in next Saturday's title game, but they'd host it here 
for the very first time. That would be something. But first things first, take care of business here tonight. Tucker's got off to a great start. Let's show you what happened in the first period. But they got a scare early, too. Just 30 seconds in, Niagara centers it. Carter Ranclap right in front for what looked to be a goal. But Tommy Scarfoni with the big kick save to prevent disaster early for the Tigers. They would answer, too. Matthew Wild, the outlet to Christian Catalano, starts the rush. And the nice feed to Tyler Fukakusa back in the lineup for his ninth of the year. He's not missing a beat, one nothing RIT. Just over 11 minutes remaining in the first. Tigers on the prowl again. Elijah Gonzalez, top shelf, his 16th of the season. It was 2 nothing Tigers at that point, and they weren't done. Just over four minutes to go. Another rush for RIT, two on one. And Carter Wilkie keeps it on his own. Great start for RIT, a 3 nothing lead after one. Set the tone in second period. Niagara looking to break through, and it's Scarfoni denying Rancliff again. Another kick save in front. Purple Eagles, one goal through the first five periods of this series. And Scarfoni, you know it, he's been clutch. Just over a minute left, Tigers with insurance as Dimitri Micro Giannakis with his first of the year as he beats Jared Fisk. 4 nothing RIT. After two, as we look inside the numbers, RIT now has nine different players score at least a goal in this postseason. As John and Gene mentioned, as Micro Giannakis joins the party with his first of the year, sixth of his career. Tigers outshot last night 39 24 so far tonight, outshooting Niagara 25 to 18. And we've seen our first two penalties of the game there in the second period. Tigers 0 for 1 on the man advantage. Niagara will have the man advantage for another minute and 31 seconds when play resumes coming up in the third. In the other AHA semifinal, AIC leads Holy Cross 2-0. Yellow Jackets have to win to force a game three tomorrow night. Crusaders looking to win for the 11th time in their last 12 games, but work to do in Worcester to reach their second straight AHA championship game. They got to get that one even in the final 20 minutes and then see what happens. When we return, we'll be rejoined by John and Gene to get their thoughts on the first two periods here right now. 4-0 Tigers on the RIT Sports Network. And we're back here at the Gene Policini Center at RIT. Two periods in the books in game two of the Atlantic Hockey semifinal series between RIT and Niagara. And the Tigers in control up for nothing. Excuse me, happy to be rejoined now by John and Gene. And guys, this game's taking my breath away. The first two periods have been a clinic on how to close out a series. Timely saves by Scarfoni, big goals when opportunities have presented themselves. And so far, only one penalty for the Tigers. 20 minutes away. From moving on here. Yeah, Kevin, don't you get sick? Yeah, we all got to stay no. so, <laughs> no. uh, yeah, Wow. Do we expect this tonight, John? Well, I was thinking that we're either way, you're going to get a route or you're going to get a, a close game, but I think you couldn't have even written the script.
better for the Tigers tonight. I don't know how well they're playing, how efficient, and really workmanlike effort in that second period. I loved it. Yeah, as we're happy to be joined by associate head coach Brian Hills, ringside. Brian, thanks so much for your time here, and uh, so far, so good. What are your thoughts here through 40 minutes of play? Well, I think you guys are talking about it there. We're, we're playing a pretty smart game right now. Uh, we got in, I, I didn't like their just maybe earlier in the second period, got into a bit of a racetrack going back and forth. Uh, you know, I'd rather just keep sustained play in the, in the offensive zone if stuff comes out that we've got our three men back and we're not giving up any, you know, rush type situations. But uh, all in all, we've, we've played very well. The one clear advantage, Brian, is Scarfoni. Their save early on. Talk about that save early on. It kind of just set the tone. Then you get a couple of odd man rushes and you guys are able to finish. It's, it felt like the momentum really swung your way early in that first period. Right, I mean, <laughs> you know, Tommy's been really, really, yeah, he was really good last night, made key saves when he was called upon. And early tonight, you know, makes the, the key save there. And then what was it, Fukakusa? <laughs> he returns tonight after missing last night and bang, you know, Catalano makes a great play again on a two on one and, you know, goal. So uh, a great response by our, you know, our, our guys and, and those young guys just keep, uh, they keep pleasing me, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I mean, your, your stars are coming out tonight. Certainly, you know, Wilkie with that great goal, but I'm so happy for Dimitri Michael Giannakis oh. jumping in there, Brian. <laughs> I mean, it's just been all 19 guys here so far this week. Oh, it, it's funny, uh, he's getting the, he's waiting to be interviewed uh, in between periods as I come off the bench, and I didn't even say anything to him. He and I just smiled at each other. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what's the message here in the third period, Brian? I know you start a man down, but what is the message from you, Dave, and, and Wayne here for the final 20? Yeah, it's just play a smart game. Don't give up odd man rushes. Let's, you know, good puck management. Let's keep our heads. Don't get drawn into any stupid penalties. Uh, after the whistle, just stay out of all the nonsense because they're going to you know, have all the tricks in the book here in the third period. All right, Brian, stay focused. Good luck. Go get him in the yeah. third. All right, guys. See ya. Appreciate your time. Brian Hill's nice. associate head coach. Here. 20 minutes away from uh, another sweep. Um, in, they've been able, they were able to close out Robert Morris last week. I love tonight's effort by the Tigers because you knew Niagara was going to come out desperate in RIT really playing smart tonight. Yeah, and Kevin, I just think back to where we were this time last year yeah. and how different this feels here tonight. And now let's go finish yep. the job here. These last few weeks have been relaxing. They, they've just cruised. And uh, you mentioned Micro to get that goal. So big for him, but he's been such a big part of the Tigers' success. And we can't forget to mention a big part of blocking shots last night, a season-high 21 for the Tigers, getting that game one victory, a big part of that as well. Now he gets rewarded with a goal. We'll see what happens here in the third, guys. Thank you so much. Can the Tigers finish off the Purple Eagles and move on to the conference championship game for the first time in eight years? We'll find out next. The final 20 minutes straight ahead. 4 nothing Tigers right now on the RIT Sports Network.
Explore your passions and challenge the status quo. At Rochester Institute of Technology, we push boundaries, champion creativity and innovation, and move the world forward. RIT's community of problem solvers blend technology, the arts, and design, pursuing theories, breaking barriers, and challenging themselves to achieve more than expected. At RIT, we're always on to something exceptional. There is the number one yes. Tiger fan, Dr. Munson, the president of the Rochester Institute of Technology here, and you can see him quite often here, hanging around the GPC. If I get a second, John, let's give a little hat tip here to the RIT men's lacrosse team yeah. knocking off Tufts today. That's always a team that seemingly is in the path of the Tigers. Of course, it's only regular season, but yeah. congratulations to Jake Kuhn for getting that, uh, that win down south today. Uh, neutral site game as now it will be the Tigers starting off shorthanded here in the third. First time tonight the Tigers a man down is now it'll be Hanson Bucata trying to swing it around in the near side. Richard knocking it down. Wilkie bouncing puck that Ziski couldn't handle. Grady Hobbs getting a little pressure there. So we're halfway through the penalty to number 24. We appreciate the time for Brian Hills yes. to give us there. During a playoff game, here's the shot. Yes, it will go out. Because well, not every school does that in Atlantic hockey. No. No, but I, I think it's key to kind of just stay what you've done all year, Wayne. Kind of keep, yeah. let the player interviews go. Wayne talks, Brian talks, right? I think that's important. You've done it all year. Yeah, Why change it's just, up during just the playoffs? Keep, keep the focus, keep the routine. Yeah. yeah Niagara's going to throw everything at RIT this period, you would figure, as Ott will chase after it. 39 seconds remaining in the power play. Shane Ott dropping it back here. Rancleff lost the handle. Tigers pushing it ahead. Here's Tyler Mahan. Mahan shorthanded going in, and then Rancleff. But Mahan doing his job, doing his thing. Yep. And he'll send it back, and the Tigers can spread this out and kill the remainder. Dimitri Micro Giannakis over to Kevin Scott. And that'll be tapped into the near side as the me shock. And that's pretty much going to do it closing Boy. seconds here. And the dominance for the Tigers against the Purple Eagles on the power play continues. They can't solve their penalty kill. Not only this weekend, but all year. That's now one for 19. Yes, it's and, incredible. And it's now over six this weekend. As time is of the essence for the visitors as the Tigers pick this one off. Fukukusa will push that down. Also interesting to note that the Brown Hills does not want to get into a track meet here. Just yeah. almost like, let's change the gears here, guys. When they get back, they retreat well defensively, like they just they're doing it all game, but they're starting the third period off perfectly. Crosley Stewart, puck gets away from him, so the puck along the near wall. Battle for that puck that Milmock, Luke Milmock loses the handle, though, on the back check, and Tigers get it out to center ice. We keep looking up at that clock. 17.35 remaining is Fukakusa. He'll send it ahead to Gonzalez. Now Fukakusa getting off the ice. As Brockhoff, that bouncing puck that Scarfoni will watch go wide. Carter Wilkie battling for the puck on the far side. And Michael Giannakis, and that will... Again, some bodies going around here, and now taken away as Berhoren cross, but then swatting away, the Tigers get it out of the zone. Crosley Stewart is Niagara changing up here. And Take your time, look at the Tigers. All right, four corners here, love this. Burn some precious minutes for seconds. No rush here as Nicholson sends it ahead. Murray in his own end, and now Niagara's turn. As in front of the Tiger bench, Blom gets upended. Hobbs to send it in. 
Gonzalez trying to get to that puck. He's got one of the goals tonight. Gustav Blom taking a look around, and Ooh. he gets upended. Big hit. Yeah, it was Richard delivering that for the Purple Eagles and racing ahead. Gonzalez, he's got Jeffrey coming down, going into the shot, and then the glove save. Elijah Gonzalez <laughs> at the end of that shift still was able to work it in deep. Yeah, he works it in deep. Looks like he's going to give up the puck, but he decides to take it, drive it to the net. Nearly had himself second goal of the game. Big save by Fisk. As Hanson Bucata to the far side as it'll go around. Ahern along the near wall is now the Purple Eagles gaining the zone. Wallace, though, had all sorts of white and orange sweaters around him. Couldn't do much with the puck. Jeffrey at the red line, pushing it ahead, and the Tigers will just kind of push it in. Enter Andrew on the four check. And it'll be Mahan. <laughs> Corner crew. Advising Niger what to do. Mahan's going to go after it. Me shock. That's too far ahead. This should be icing. No, they wave it off, actually. For Horncrofts. Out of the near side. And the Tigers, and that is a hit. And the fans wanting a call on that. Very late as Mahan leaves the stick on the ice, and he is hurt going over to the bench. Jacques off of skates. And Niagara coming the other direction. Knocked down behind the net. So Niagara's starting to hit here a little bit. Here's the shot from the outside. Tigers block it in front. Another block shot. And another one coming from Caleb Moritz as he leads the way out of the zone. Just you know, back to just being gritty are the Tigers. Kind of like the pace right now, right? Not from time just kind of just ticking away. Wild, far side, room for Fukakusa to work with. Fukakusa sidestepping two defenders. It's Tyler Fukakusa centering pass, and Niagara packing it in there. We get a whistle, and what is the call here? We get some uh, conversation yeah. afterward. Philippe hit with a high stick. Yeah, so. there we go. Okay. So they'll put the face off back here in the Niagara end with 14-15 for them. Management's been very good for the Tigers. Played smart here through the first nearly six minutes. So methodical so far for RIT. Bukakusa winning the draw. Nicholson fires. Love save made. Friend of the show, Tom Clark. Grease native, John. Yes, sir. Uh, Look, can't keep those grease guys down. Informs me there is a scout for the Nashville Predators in attendance tonight. So, gosh, I remember years ago at the Ritter when yeah. you had the GM uh, Clark of the uh, Maple Leafs yes. showing up at looking at Tyler Brenner. And what do you know? Tyler Brenner was signed thereafter. So, you yep. can only imagine who they might be looking at here tonight. A lot of talent. Wearing white sweaters tonight. Yeah, some of these guys you'll see at the next level for sure. As Fukakusa. Here's Nicholson. The RIT chance starting from the corner crew as the shot blocked. As Carlin lifting it ahead. Nifty pass getting it ahead to Wallace. Wallace trying to set this up. He's not going to be able to. What a play on the near side by Casero. It's just been, just defensively, they've just done a great job, RIT, tonight. I keep waiting for this uh, big counter punch from Niagara, John, is uh, coming ahead. Gonzalez breaking up the play. Here's Richard, the cross ice feed does not connect with Odd. Odd behind the net. Centering, and it goes off the side of the net, actually. Tommy can't get to it. Lund getting that loose puck. He'll send it wide. 
So here's some pressure as Mishok back to Rodna. Rodna, the big pad save. Another save by Scarfoni. And out uh, of the zone, that'll go. It's a great look off the rebound, but there's Scarfoni. Again. Time and time again, coming up with big stops. Crosley Stewart. Off the glass, this will go. Oh, there's the turnover in front as Richard sends that wide. The rebound, the Tigers are out of sorts here. Rebound, and that yeah. goes. It's an own goal off of Wilkie. Off of Wilkie. And uh, Niagara is applying pressure, so greasy goal for the Purple Eagles. It's 4-1. to one. And it starts uh, because of a Tiger turnover in their own end. And Niagara takes advantage, and they've got a pulse. Yeah, it kind of goes in off of Wilkie. We're going to see this, as you mentioned, an own goal for the uh, Tigers. Pitfalls right? balls around. It goes off the skate of hands of Bucata. Oh, eight, and, eight. Then, and then off of the leg of Wilkie. Wilkie. Okay, there you go. So that's a greasy goal there for Niagara. So they're on the board. And there's a penalty on Mike Rogianakis, which I did not see, Gino. That whole sequence, not good for the Tigers. No. As going in, it'll be Wallace. So Giannakis, two minutes for the trip, is Ahern along the wall. Second power play this evening here for Niagara. Shot from the outside, blocked in front by Nicholson. And the Tigers' opportunity to clear, they cannot. Ott off of his skate, Wilkie chasing after it. As that bouncing puck now goes back up top, walking in, Ahern sends it over to the far side. Short side attempt, and it'll deflect out of play. Uh, number one thing, you kill off the penalty. Kind of reset, regroup. I want to give the Purple Eagles any kind of momentum or hope. Wayne Wilson team has been closing, certainly this postseason, but really all year when they get leads after two, they're basically unbeatable. So they announced the Niagara goal, and the Tiger fans will make some noise to drown it out. And uh, you hear the place come alive for that. Well, if you break this up into small chunks, John, kill the penalty. Yep, that's number one goal for the Tigers. Absolutely, get, Gino. Get to the media timeout. And then Wayne Wilson, if he wants to, can shorten up the bench yep. and kind of work uh, work those final minutes off here. You know, last night, as you called it, I mean, that media timeout, I thought it helped him down the stretch last night. You know, they were in the box a lot. They were Felt like they were running out of gas. Kind of got galvanized after the media timeout. Wilkie to take the draw for the Tigers. Going against Wallace, top power play unit remaining on the ice for the Purple Eagles. They win the draw. Ott up top in the high slot. Ott with the blast from the outside sends it wide as Rancliffe along the wall. Tigers in this diamond here formation. We're down to 47 seconds remaining here in the Niagara power play. Rancliffe shoots. Scarponi in the rebound in front. It's 4-2. Oh, to two. boy. Look out. 4-2. to two. Niagara, the power play. It's going to be Wallace getting that rebound for the Purple Eagles. Out in front there. Kind of left undetended. All of a sudden, we got a game at 4-2. And they finally solve the penalty kill of the Tigers. And it comes at a great time for the Purple Eagles. Wallace camping out in front. That was a rebound that Scarfoni could not control. So a greasy goal and then yeah. a power play goal. And quickly things change here. A little life here for Niagara. Tigers have to get back to work here as Catalano trying to gain the zone, pushes it down low. Comes over to the near side where for Crofts leaves it. Back, and the Tigers to send it back in with 10.55 remaining in this contest. Still a lot of hockey to be played. Tigers got to find a way to respond. Catalano off the side of the net. As Nicholson sending it ahead as Fukukusa was right there for a rebound. Fisk holding up. Big save. Tigers now maybe starting to heat it up here. But they've got to find a way to swing the momentum because right now it's in favor of Niagara. Big save by Fisk again. As 
as he should. Wayne Wilson, complete trust in this line. Fukakusa, Wild, and Catalano. Oh, yeah. Richard to take the draw for the Purple Eagles. Battle for this puck, and Tigers come up with it as Wild takes it to the corner crew side of the ice. Michael Giannakis, that's going to be knocked down in front. Rosley Stewart will send it back in. The Tigers tag up. And then Atlantic Hockey logo is Niagara to walk it ahead. Ott. Purple Eagles gaining the zone. Stewart with a battle. Richard just laying on this puck for whatever reason. And now coming up with it will be Jeffrey. Jeffrey plowing his way ahead. He's held up by Odd Stewart. And Niagara to control. Jeffrey taking it away as we reach the halfway point of the third. Cross ice feed. Tanner Andrew on the wall. Off a of skate in front. Niagara trying to clear it out as Casero and Henson Bucata now anchoring the defense for our ride team. Next non icing whistle gets us to that media timeout. Rancleff trying to push it back there, didn't have full wood on it, and then falling down and you get a whistle. And we get the hand pass call. Face off coming outside of the zone. When we come back with 9.31 remaining. Get on up, Tiger fans. We're in the third. Tigers up by two. Playoff hockey here at the Palacini, and time to jump around, Tiger fans. Yep, Tigers got to try to get back that momentum. Things get a little bit slightly uncomfortable. Well, team facing elimination is going to give you everything they yep. got here. Some of these players knowing this will be the last time they're ever on the ice here for their school. As the Purple Eagles pushing it ahead. Ahern swinging it down low. Scarfoni is just going to cover yep. up, play it safe. Now we're down to 9.05 remaining. Here we go. Just got to find a way to respond if you're RIT. Got to answer the last two goals from the Purple Eagles. Stay out of the box, Gino. Tigers win that draw as Gonzalez. He's double teamed on the far side. Hobbs is over there to help out. So the Tigers being cautious, exiting the zone. And they'll lift it down, and icing will be waved off. And now the corner crew will begin their chant. <laughs> Purple Eagles trying to work it in as Hobbs taking a look around. Gustav Blom defensively for RIT. And now Gonzalez has time to work it out of the zone, trying to sidestep a man. Here's Nicholson pushing it ahead. Wilkie sidestepping a defender. Wilkie Ooh. sidestepping another defender. Showing those moves. Now allow the Tigers here just to keep it in the zone. And it Pays off, working it in. Hobbs to the far side is Fukakusa. All right, T piecemealing in a line change. Crowd appreciating the efforts of the yeah. Tigers. Nice move by Gonzalez. Fukakusa backhanding it. The shot by oh. Wild, and then 
jumping out, realizing we need a reset with Fisk. And Fisk is playing in this third period. He's come up with some big stops, big saves. Covering up that loose puck. Now we're under eight minutes. Catalano, Fukakusa, and Wild on the ice, along with Stewart and Micro Giannakis. 7.49 remaining. And we'll drop the puck oh. again here. And uh, yeah, two seconds came off, and there, Sweeney, the uh, ref, is going to say, put the two seconds yeah. up. I don't blame the official trying to take two seconds off, John, but there we go. They put it right, look how quick. And they drop that puck as Carlin going back after it. Nice play by Micro Giannakis, sending back in. The Tigers tag up. Carlin walking it ahead and getting it down low to Ott. Micro Giannakis winning that battle. He'll swing it over to the far side. Tigers trying to swat it oh. out. Tommy making the save on the far side by Rodna that shot. And now the Tigers swinging it down low. Off to the races of Catalano. That's going to wave off the icing. Tigers can't hold it in as Ott sending it ahead. Beaton will swing it down low. And Beaton takes a shot. Niagara Bench wanted a call there, and they're not going to get it. Philippe Jacques along the near side. And Mahan is back on the ice. Marouche had to leave earlier, so that's a great sign. As Casero pushes it down low. Connor Milmock over to the far side. And that's Hackett hitting with a high stick. So yep. the faceoff should come up all the way to the Niagara end. Approaching six and a half, Gino. Tigers button things up here. Puck management. Penalty free and like to get a a goal here. What are they, uh, what are we doing here? We gonna look at something? Not sure what, what they, we, yeah, we'll, so we'll try to find out what are we looking at here. What are they reviewing here? Who hit it with the high stick? I'm yeah. guessing that's what it was. Okay. Guys. And to me, coach's who, challenge that it was actually hit by a high stick. Yeah. Okay, so major penalty. There's a hit. I think they're going to try to challenge, at least according to. It was a hit. Yep, so they're going to review it. It was the was... hit on Hackett at yes. the blue line when he hit it. And, and really, to me, this is uh, kind of your Niagara Hail Mary here, John. Yeah. Like, a contact that had means five-minute major. Yeah, okay. And it's a roll of the dice. As we're doing all this, uh, Fisk is doing the uh, Devin Levi yeah. take a knee on the ice here and get away from the crease. And, uh, so let's see it here if we can see anything. No, no, I, it's not contact. No, it's not contact no, head at no. all. But the, like you the said, head it bounces back a little bit. But it's a hail mary. You like the challenge? You know, but it's uh, you don't get it. You lose your time out, yeah. and that's uh, the price you're going to have to pay here. But. Well, you're, you're, you're rusting here, you're the Tiger defense here too. Wayne Polson yeah. can uh, pull should, it out. Yeah. This should be a quick, quick decision here. Yeah, okay, that's, yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah, I'm not sure who uh, upstairs or Niagara said we should take a look at that. Okay. But, so no timeout for Niagara. John, I was going to ask you, when you're down by two, Three minutes to go, two minutes to go. Yeah, you know, you talking with Wayne, it was 3 nothing, and I said, boy, they pulled their goalie early. He goes, I thought they would do it sooner. Hmm. 
And that was three, I think, 46 to go. Down two. That's a good point, Gino. You don't want to wait to under two to go, maybe under three. Well, that Michael Giannakis goal in the closing minute of the Huge. second is so big right now. Yeah. As uh, the Tigers take it away, as Wilkie will send that to the far side. And that did allow the Tigers' defense to rest here a little bit. Working it back in. Ziski over to the far side. Here's Hackett working it ahead. And the save made by Scarfoni, and he'll keep it going. Good. Good as job. Nicholson ahead to control oh. this. Oh, just out in front. Yep, as, uh, boy, that bouncing puck. 5.55 remaining. Puck coming back here yep. into the Tiger end. Under six to go. I don't know about you, John. I got to stand up here. I'm this thinking is, now. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm getting close. <laughs> I think if once they pull fists, I'm going to stay. I think, Gino. Yeah, you and I are amped up on coffee here yes. tonight. As uh, coming up ahead, this will be Hobbs at the red line. Gets held up at the blue line. Gonzalez able to help out, and he'll shovel in. Hobbs way offside. He tags up. Niagara scored the last two here, both of them coming in the third as Michael Giannakis getting over them. Hot, centering pass, a lot of Tigers around there, and they'll walk it out as Andrew dumping it ahead. Knee shock. <laughs> getting it back. You know, the corner crew is worth the price of admission oh, here. Oh, gosh, it's outstanding. JD is also standing up now, folks. I have to. Yeah. I got to stand up, Gino. Yeah. I can't. No, no way. Yeah. We're approaching five minutes to go. I'd be pacing if I could, but this uh, headset won't allow me to. No. Up, so. I feel like I'm, I'm approach, uh, I'm approach of pacing right now. We're getting close. Here's Michael Giannakis taking a look around. He's going to try to bang it out. Off the glass, held in by Brockhoff. Sending it ahead. Oh, flexion goes wide. Two Tigers on Crosley Stewart. Isabel is trying to help out here. Niagara holding it in is Brockhoff. Sending it. Puck the flex, and Andrew's going to find a way out. Andrew at the red line, getting held up. Jeffrey will dump it, but not in deep. Tigers get that change in. 4.25 remaining. And now Niagara to change as well. Down the ice, this will go. That bouncing puck is meat shock. Hinges it over to the near side. Ziski getting pressured by Wild. Up along the near side is Hackett, dumping it in. And uh, with Connor Milmock coming on down, face off on a 401 remaining. Very smart. And, and now they pull Fisk. Yeah, Fisk is going out with four minutes to go. Yeah, I thought it would be three. They're going to do it at four. With the face off at the end of the ice here. Yeah, it's smart. Okay, here we go. Well, they're. It's all or nothing right here for the Purple Eagles. Here we go. For Horan Cross, battling for the puck, he wins that battle. Luke Milmock, back up top, this goes Ott over to the far side. Under four minutes to go. Extra attacker on the ice here for the Purple Eagles, off the side of the net, this goes. Luke Milmock trying to get it out. Tigers have a net yeah. to net. Off to the race, this is Hobbs. Hobbs, can he get to it? No. That would have done it. So close, so close. Scarfoni swinging around. Not out, however, for Horncross. Down low, three and a half to go. Luke Milmock, back up top, this goes. Ott sending it ahead, and Scarfoni does not give up the rebound. That was big, great rebound. He had a clean window, too, which I thought was important. Tigers able to keep 
purple sweaters away from Scarfoni. And he's able to see that the entire time. 325 to go. And the net is empty. Six attackers on the ice here for the Purple Eagles. 325 remaining. Nicholson teeing it up, sending it ahead, going ahead. Gonzalez, yes! Woo! You betcha, I do! We'll see you next Saturday. Count it. Been there all year, big game tonight, and comes up with the big empty netter when they needed it badly, the Tigers. A little breathing room here, up three with 3.18 to go. With that, it's all this now ties Matthew Wild for the team oh. leading goals with 17. Oh, Gino. Wow, Tigers come up big. What a play by Nicholson to get it ahead as well. As for now, Fisk is in his net. And the corner crew is really letting Niagara have it. 250 remaining. Oh, the front side. Here's a rock goal, his second of the game, 17th of the season, scored by number 16, Elijah Gonsalves. With the assist to number 24, Ryan Nicholson. And number 21, Carter Wilkie. That's Gonsalves from Nicholson and Wilkie. Time of the Tigers goal, 16-42. Tigers to count this down. They do not have an empty net to shoot at, John. Andrew knocking it down. Very loud in here right now. Oh, yeah. Imagine. Hopefully. There's a little poke check by Scarfoni as that will be yeah. lifted out. Imagine what it's going to be like next Saturday night, 7.05. And that could be a third game, that last check. American yep. International is up on the College of the Holy Cross. Hold on to the roof next Saturday. Hand out shoehorns. Get everybody in, squeeze everybody into the arena next Saturday. Whew. Gonna be fun. Face off coming back to the Niagara and two minutes to go here. Lund over to the far side. Gonzalez knocks it down. <laughs> Tigers and Gonzalez. Yeah, just move this puck around. Nicholson to send this in. Not sure what they're chanting, John. I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure it's great, though. <laughs> Michael Giannakis on top of that puck. And uh, Niagara has waved the white flag because the puck is in this end of the ice. Yeah. They, did, they did not pull Fisk. Corner crew, I know what they're saying. On your feet here. Yeah. Job well done. Got a little dicey there in the third. Giving up a couple of goals. The one on the power play. The greasy goal, which was an own goal. Tigers able to buckle down defensively. They stayed out of the box. Good puck management, and they're off to the conference finals next Saturday night. And uh, what will be the best atmosphere we've oh. ever had here at the Policini as Hobbs. Hobbs getting shoved in the back <laughs> here. Is Brockhoff. Hobbs is very patient. <laughs> right. And finally, they'll blow the whistle. Woo. 52 seconds remaining in the Niagara season. 
All right, so keep an eye here because this is Veaton and Gauthier and Gorshak on the ice, and let's just hope the faceoff's going to come out of the zone that yeah. uh, just, we all play nice here in the final seconds. Nice, right. Tigers outscoring, winning the series, outscoring them nine to three. Well, they start the bus chant, and the keys are jingling here as the tradition that dates back to the days of the Ritter. Yeah. 35 seconds remaining, chip down the ice, and this will go for icing. Tigers fighting through this uh, whatever bug, John, too, as uh, any playoff run, you're going to have adversity. Yeah. And we'll never know the depths of what the Tigers had to battle here. Sure, absolutely. But able to dig down, come up big last night, and then tonight, they were cruising, got a little close, hunkered down, and good teams find a way to finish. Fans on their feet, closing seconds here tonight, and the RIT Tigers will see you next Saturday night for the championship game in Atlantic Hockey. Your final score here tonight, the RIT Tigers 5-9 or 2. The Tigers take the series in two. It's been a long eight years, but the Tigers are back. In the conference finals with a trip to the NCAA tournament on the line, Tommy Scarfoni, had a magnificent weekend. And the Tigers, again, on that mission. Unfinished business. They're one game away from getting back to the NCAA tournament. The talent on this team and just another A-plus job yeah. by the coaching staff of Wayne Wilson, Brian Hills, and Dave Insulaka. And think about it. I mean, they had, a na they had to navigate without Fukakusa last night. I mean, you're hopeful that Cody can come back next weekend and that winner take all game next Saturday. They've got an illness and a bug going through the team, but they found a way to get it done. And more importantly, get the sweep. Niagara, the Tigers are patiently waiting here as Niagara, knowing their season's over, they're just kind of right. taking an extra minute to congratulate one another. Yeah. Boy, I've never seen anything like this. Now, finally, Niagara will step up to the line and okay. shake hands. And again, uh, hard-fought series here where, give Niagara credit, they made it a little uncomfortable they in the did. third here tonight. I'll give them credit. They didn't fold their tent in the third. We knew they wouldn't. They got that greasy goal and the power play goal, so they made the Tigers earn the victory tonight. And that's what the Tigers did. They earned it, and they're off again to the conference uh, finals. So we do not know, and likely we won't know, uh, because there's four minutes left out at the Hart Center. AIC is up 2-0 on Holy Cross. Okay. So, so that, that, is, uh, even though this game started after that one, that one hasn't finished up yet. And uh, we'll all be watching tomorrow night. Yep, scoreboard and, watching. And I'm sure they're not happy out in Massachusetts thinking, Hey, we could have been able to host. Nope, you'll be coming here. Yep. Wow, and we're just going to kind of listen in here, folks, as we'll send it over to you, the corner crew. They mobbing down there. Everybody's mobbing each other. Yep.
think we'll have some Jonas tonight from Stu Hughes, yeah. John, too, <laughs> once we get to that point. Get our forget our stars here. You gotta figure what Gonzalez is one of them for sure with a pair of goals. You know what? I, I <laughs> I give one just to Dimitri Mikrogenakis yeah. for all the work he's done this year. Yeah. Leading the team in block shots. Wilkie had a three-point night. Okay, so Wilkie, Gonsalves, and Scarfoni. Scarfoni. But that goal by Mikrogenakis, can't say enough about that goal. The timing of it, extended the lead. That goal's big. This game would have been 3-2. You don't need to pull fist as early as they did. Called it, Gino. Yeah, <laughs> give it to Dimitri. Yes, right. Second star of the game from your RIT Tigers. One goal and one assist number 21, <laughs> Carter, Carter Wilkie. Will. And then I assume Gonzalez, right? Yes. First star, okay. Yeah, Wilkie's fired up. First yes. star of the game from your RIT Tigers. Two goals, number 16, Elijah Gonsalves. <laughs> Boy, he's been steady. And Just there so they are. Tonight's year. three stars so of the game brought to you by Lattimore Physical Gonsalves, Therapy. Gonsalves, one of the Fans leaders now in his fifth year. We send it downstairs to Kim Coffey. This team came into the weekend struggling with sickness. Cody Laskowski out of the lineup with an injury. How were you guys able to rally and win this in two games? We're just so deep. We've got so many guys that could play on a given night. We had a lot of guys step up this weekend. It was awesome to see. You guys survive a late push there from Niagara. They tried to get one over on you guys. How were you able to hold them off? Uh, you know, just sticking to the system. We really got down to our four check. We switched over to a more passive approach, and uh, we did it well. We executed really well. Knowing you guys won this in two games, with <laughs> dealing with all that heading into the weekend, what does that do for your confidence moving forward, knowing there's just one more game left to be played? Obviously, we're going to enjoy it tonight, but job's not finished. We're not really too happy right now. All right, Elijah, thanks so much for your time, and we'll see you back here tomorrow, or next week, I should say. Thank you. <laughs> Gene, John? Oh, I like that, Gene. Yeah, I love that love answer. Love that answer. Yeah, there's one more hill to climb, John. I'm happy, you're happy, they're not happy though, I like that. Boy, the uh, corner crew's still hanging out. Well, we, we're gonna have the highlights, and we'll hear from Wayne Wilson coming your way next year. This is the RIT Sports Network. Oh yeah, you know what time it is. 
Stu Hughes doing some donuts here, John. It's a little, you win a playoff series, you get a little donut 100%. Well done, Stu. Well, the crowd <laughs> loving it, as we all are. Look at Stu. He's having fun. Yeah, as that uh, goal horn will sound, we have uh, just a lot of people hanging out, having some fun as we take a look here. And it's how the Tigers won game two. It was a quick start for RIT. Let's point out Tommy Scarfoni with a big, big save. And it's going to be Tyler Fukakusa getting the feed. Fukakusa from Catalano. Wild also with an assist at 118. Yeah, they got Fist moving left. It was well played, but Fist has kind of went the wrong direction. That results in a goal. Gonzalez then would get it from Casero. Look at Gonzalez. Bam! 2-0 at 844. Boy, it looks like he's going to give up the puck, kind of pivots, and then boom, he's got a great shot. And at that point, the Tigers off and running. Not too many in college hockey have a shot like that. Carter Wilkie unassisted, and it's 3-0 at 1556. He kind of just glides. He's got that burst, and as you mentioned, an incredible shot. That's an NHL shot that he has. Tigers at that point led three zip. Now, just over a minute remaining. How about this for your first goal of the season? Put it on the board for Dimitri Mikrogianakis. How big would that goal be? The four zip, because things got a little dicey in the third, but his first goal of the year and rewarded as the third star of the game tonight. Hobbs and Wilkie with the assist. Now this one is just gonna pinball around off of Hanson Ducato, off of Wilkie. And Shane Ott gets the credit for it. It's uh, four to one. Yeah, you can't really put that on Tommy at all. It's a greasy goal, and all of a sudden, Niagara's got life down 4 1. So Michael Giannakis gets called for the penalty on that. So on the power play, Niagara gets the first power play goal. It's going to be Wallace in front from Ratcliffe and Ahern at 8.42. Yeah, couldn't clean it up. JoJo there just a little bit late trying to get back, gets the rebound. All of a sudden, it's 4 2 with plenty of time, Gino. And then Carter Wilkie's going to pick up his third point of the night. Getting and winning the draw, Nicholson finding Elijah Gonzalez, bam, ball game. Woo, that was big. That was big because they pulled Fisk early, but the Tigers able to seal it. More importantly, off down to the conference finals. Yeah, a one game winner take all. Yep. Let's get the thoughts from head coach Wayne Wilson as we send it over to Kim Coffey. Oh, <laughs> coach, uh, your team came into the weekend facing some challenges. How were they able to rally and get the job done in two games? Well, the fact that some of the guys that were sick scored, they might want to get sick more often here. Like, um, it was Dimitri tonight was the sick one that said, I, I still want to play, and, and he scores a goal, which he hasn't scored a lot of goals this year, so that was good on him. But I, I thought just at the beginning of the game, uh, they missed one at our end. We went right back down, scored. We got the early goals, and that um, – we got comfortable with that, and then we just played from there. But uh, we capitalized every time we got an odd man situation. It seemed like we capitalized on it, and that was the difference in the game. How much does playing this type of rivalry game at home make a difference? I mean, it was louder in here than I've heard it in a long time. Yeah, we, you know, we've had great crowds here down the stretch. The second half has been outstanding. So, uh, and the fact that our students are gone, or at least maybe on the way back, uh, you know, next weekend should be a lot of fun here. And... Um, you know, I think that's that bodes well. I mean, last last year, Kanisha sold out their facility, and I, I would anticipate we'll be sold out next uh, weekend. So, um, and the fact that it's our fans, it's it's great for us for for momentum and energize us, and it, and it feels good. A lot of guys getting in on the score sheet. How has this team found so much offensive success in the playoffs? You know, we've we've had balanced scoring. Uh, you know. We've had balance scoring, we've had defensemen scoring, we've had just a lot, and we've had good goaltending. It's, you know, same recipe uh, for a successful team in a successful year, and uh, it's been that way all year for us. So uh, it starts off with Fukakusa, who couldn't play last night, couldn't get out of bed yesterday, and he gets the first one. And then, like I said, Dimitri, we just have getting contributions from a lot of people, which, you know, makes it a nice team win. It's 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 been truly a, a good team, but, you know, we've still got work to do here. We know another game but uh, we get a little extra day here this week uh, we know we're at home so we don't have a travel day and we can focus in on what we uh, you know with a big weekend were there any challenges presented this weekend that uh, you know you noticed and would like to see your team work on here throughout the week uh, you know the first night the penalties um, there's lots of things we can play better you know we're going to need to play better every weekend gets a little tougher so uh, but they've been up to the challenge and they you know, we do a lot of different things. Some of it uh, they had answers to tonight, but uh, we've been able to add to our game. We're not always 
trying new things just to get out of ruts. We're, we're adding to our game, and that's when you've got a lot of veterans. And, and the freshmen, obviously, that speaks for themselves what they've been able to do. Well, Coach, we don't know who you're going to be facing yet, uh, but we do know you'll be back here Saturday, hopefully a good crowd. Um, but, yeah, we'll see you back here Saturday. Yeah, we're excited. Thank you so much. Gene, John, back to you guys. All right, thank you very much, Kim, and everybody. Everybody's already focused for next Saturday. Oh, can, can it be next Saturday? I want this week to blow by. Right. It's going to be intense. <laughs> it's going to be fun, and I can't wait for next Saturday night. We take a look here at the final stats in this game. How about the job, just not tonight, but this weekend for Tommy Scarfoni? Scarfoni was brilliant. I mean, listen, I thought there would be maybe – there's only three penalties in the game tonight. So, but, I mean, Scarfoni's a difference. I'm not going to, you know, no disrespect towards Fisk, but Scarfoni is one of the best goalies in the country, not only in this league, and that's why the Tigers have 4-0 in the postseason. When you got number 30, that's, they're a tough out. <laughs> <laughs> they're tough to beat when you got Scarfoni between the pipes. This still hasn't gone final, the Hart Center, but yeah. I, I think we can call it one minute to go, 3 okay. nothing AIC. I oh, mean, it did go final. Okay, so thank you, Kevin. So that just went final. AIC over Holy Cross. Game three coming up tomorrow. Well, I mean, Wayne just telling Kimmy, think about this. So whoever, they got to go to a game three. So they lose that extra day. Then they got to have a travel day. So that, so that's big. That that series went three. And more importantly, the Tigers series only went two. Yeah, as we will be with you yeah. next Saturday. Now, we want you to come down to the Palacini 705 for the faceoff. I'm here from Kevin Roche, we're going to be doing an hour pre-game next week. Oh, is it? <laughs> hey, yeah, two hours, three hours. We could be be like this. We could come on the air at noon next Saturday. Yeah, I'm, I'm, all, I I'm, I'm on board. There were people tailgating I out here in the it. U lot. Today. I couldn't believe I pulled in. I go, they were tailgating. They were playing games. I, I think next Saturday night is going to be, like you mentioned, maybe it'll be the biggest crowd we've ever seen at the Paul Cini Center. And this arena is 10 years old. So, John, back in the final for the first time in eight years, your final thoughts? Well, listen, this, is, this has been the mission, right? They got unfinished business, but they wanted to get to the finals. They're one win away. Do we want Holy Cross? I know I do. You know they do. They won't say it. We want to see Holy Cross and RIT next Saturday night in this building, winner take all. Can't wait. Yes, as we'll be with you, we want to thank you for tuning in tonight. And on behalf of everyone here at the RIT Sports Network, for Doug and Ron on camera, for our statistician Peter Mancuso, for Kevin Roche, Kim Coffey, our director Mark Fregali, the team leader Dr. Jim Waters. My name is Gene Battaglia with John DeTulio here tonight on the RIT Sports Network. See you in the next Saturday night, Tiger fans. <laughs>